Is this it? Is it over? Half a million people, and it's resolved like this? Even though they knew in advance, at this moment, everyone is still shocked to the point of numbness. Vivi leaned against the wall and looked down at the scene below. In front of the palace square, there were many rebel soldiers lying in disarray, their eyes rolled back. These people were the vanguard troops, riding warhorses adapted to desert terrain. Even the horses fainted. Quiet. The capital is very quiet at this moment. Compared to the previous thunderous cries of thousands of horses, you could hear a pin drop. Bell gasped for breath. This is conqueror's hockey. The power possessed by only one person out of millions, the power of a king. I've heard about it before, but seeing it for the first time. Gao was equally shocked. To this, Luffy could only shake his head. Just awakened conquerors, it's not that powerful. Initially, it was only an unconscious use due to a burst of emotions. Afterwards, through training, one can control the range, control the target, control the intensity. To be able to instantly stun half a million people like him, only a very small number of people can do it. After all, his conquerors has already reached IV-4, and another level up would allow him to master conquerors coding. I used almost indiscriminate attacks. Some civilians were probably affected. The rest is up to you. Luffy wasn't interested in getting involved and turned to leave. The aftermath work is more troublesome. To collect the weapons and equipment of the half a million unconscious rebel soldiers, to clear them out and settle them elsewhere, and to inform them of the truth and appease them afterwards. This is not something that can be done in a day or two. Fortunately, Luffy doesn't need to worry about all this. His mission is already complete. 870. Vivi wanted to help, but was rejected by Cobra, who asked her to accompany the hero. Someone accompanied him, and of course Luffy wouldn't refuse. The two of them wandered around the palace, and the afternoon passed by. No one came to disturb them, as the machinery of the Alabasta Kingdom was busy. Night fell. At the highest point of the palace, on top of a tower. Luffy looked up at the starry sky. The stars twinkled on the deep blue canopy of the sky, like countless pairs of eyes, blinking. When I was a child, I used to climb up here often, and every time I would be scolded by my father. After the country's affairs were finally resolved, Vivi's mood completely relaxed. Following Luffy's example, she looked up and admired the countless stars in the sky, smiling brightly as she recounted childhood anecdotes. As a princess, especially the only princess, she was completely cherished, afraid of being broken if held too tightly, and afraid of melting if kept in the mouth. Until a few years ago, the country encountered problems, and Crocodile appeared as a hero. In the following year, not a drop of rain fell in the entire country, and a severe food crisis occurred in various places. The original oasis turned into a desert. Countless people died of hunger. At that time, she was only 14 years old, but she resolutely abandoned her princess status and was determined to infiltrate a criminal organization to investigate the source of the crisis. Now that I think about it, I really didn't consider anything back then. I only knew that I should do something, but I didn't know what was the best way to do it, Vivi sighed softly. No, you are already amazing. To have such determination at the age of 14, you are much braver than Kazuki Hayori, at least in Luffy's opinion. Looking back at the many princesses that appeared in the original story, Vivi was the one he admired the most from the beginning. Thank you, Mr. Luffy, Vivi turned around and a genuine smile appeared on her delicate face. Innocent and radiant, it was a brilliant smile befitting a girl who was about to turn 16. As for the reward, Alabasta really doesn't have any money left, so I can't pay you 1.2 billion. She made a cute expression and acted like a spoiled child on the spot. Luffy chuckled and shook his head. He wasn't a devil, but he still insisted on deducting money from others even though he knew they didn't have any. Never mind. Consider it a debt for now. When Alabasta returns to its former prosperity one day, remember to pay me back. Yes. I will remember. Vivi smiled sweetly. The atmosphere suddenly fell silent for a while. Tomorrow, will the Straw Hat crew arrive? She whispered. Luffy nodded. It had been two days and he missed that group of idiots. After that, will you leave? Vivi's voice became even softer. Of course, we won't stop until we reach the final island. In order to establish the permanent free adventure shop, he must dominate the Grand Line, 
and one of the indicators is finding Raftel. If he couldn't even find Raftel, how could he dominate? Mr. Luffy. Suddenly, Vivi's tone became more serious, her shining eyes staring at the person beside her. Luffy turned around, and a soft body threw itself into his arms, the wind brushing his face. I like you, the little fangirl took the initiative to give a sweet kiss. The nights in Alabasta were also hot, typical of a desert country. Skipping 10,000 words, the next day, Luffy woke up from the soft bed, but Vivi was nowhere to be seen. He got up, washed up, and went to the large bath, soaking in the cool water, silently enjoying his leisure time. Recalling last night's battle, he naturally won easily. How could Vivi be his opponent? Besides, she was still a beginner. But this behavior made him feel a little uneasy. It's probably a sign that she's preparing to say goodbye to him. As a princess, and the only child, Vivi clearly needs to stay in Alabasta. Sleeping with me and then wanting to run away? Luffy couldn't help but think, what a heartless woman. She's only 15 years old, and still a week away from her 16th birthday, yet she's already this heartless. What will she be like when she grows up? Then I'll just have to tie her up and take her back. After all, he's a pirate, and kidnapping a princess is one of the things pirates love to do, right? With his mind made up, Luffy, as usual, opened the adventure shop. Great, he finally saw another hockey fruit. Buy it. Observation hockey. LV2 right pointing arrow LV3, a one third chance, what luck. Refresh. 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 After refreshing three times, he finally saw the second one. Buy it. Eat it. Observation hockey. LV3 right pointing arrow LV4. This is unbearable. Continue refreshing, refresh again. The third hockey fruit. Conqueror's hockey. LV4 right pointing arrow LV5. In that instant, the techniques of using Conqueror's coils awakened in Luffy's mind. As if it was innate, he naturally mastered this ability. He tried clenching his fist, and the Conqueror's coils appeared on his right fist, with black and red lightning flowing in the air. Finally reached this level. Luffy was very satisfied. With hockey, he could confidently say that he had completely reached Emperor level combat power. This is all the result of sweat and perseverance. Without his persistence in refreshing the shop, would he have awakened hockey today? That would have taken several more days. Conqueror's hockey restrained. Luffy looked at the adventure shop again, considering whether to refresh another hockey fruit. After all, he has already obtained observation hockey. But after thinking about it, he decided to give up for now. After refreshing the shop five times, continuing to refresh would cost 640 adventure coins, and then 1280. Forget it. Forget it. You have arrived at a new island, Alabasta, and received a reward of 1000 adventure coins. Adventure coins. 6765 right pointing arrow 5545. Closing the adventure shop, Luffy got up and left the bathhouse. After dressing, he followed the servant to the restaurant. Not seeing Vivi, he asked, where is Vivi? She is dealing with the aftermath of the rebellion, the servant replied. Princess Vivi instructed me to serve you once you woke up. What would you like for breakfast, Luffy Sama? Give me some of Alabasta's specialty cuisine. Luffy nodded and asked again, by the way, have you seen a woman with a white cowboy hat? Are you referring to your companion? Miss Robin? The servant shook his head. Where did she run off to? Luffy picked up the phone and dialed Robin's contact number. The port city, oil flower. The Sunny and Mary docked at the port one after another. Nami and the others got off the ship and saw Robin. Ah, Whiskey Peak's beautiful lady, Sanji immediately became infatuated. Miss. Usopp opened his mouth but couldn't remember for a moment. Just call me Robin, that code name is no longer necessary. Robin smiled slightly and said, I deliberately waited here for you. Mr. Swordsman, there's no need to be so nervous, I am already your companion. Zoro gripped the hilt of his sword and didn't trust this woman very much. He frowned and asked, Where's Luffy? Luffy is in the capital of Alabasta. I just spoke with him and he asked me to bring you all there. Then we're counting on you. Sanji immediately pledged his loyalty. Nami's face darkened. Wait, I still can't trust you. I want to talk directly to Luffy. Nami-san, 
The matter with Crocodile has already been resolved. Haven't you seen the news? Robin thought for a moment and took out a bag of gems from her pocket. These are what I found in Crocodile's treasury. I don't know how to handle them. Seeing the sparkling gems, Nami's eyes turned into the symbol for Belly. She pressed her hands against her cheeks and shamelessly exclaimed, Robin Neeson, let me handle it for you. Robin chuckled lightly and gave all the gems to Nami. Afterwards, she noticed Chopper and was slightly surprised. A face I haven't seen before? He's our ship's doctor, Tony Tony Chopper. He joined us as a doctor on Drum Island, Bartolomeo introduced. A doctor. Robin couldn't resist cute things. The socially anxious Chopper hid behind Usopp, which made her feel a bit mischievous. Dr. Chopper, nice to meet you. I'm Robin, the archaeologist of the Straw Hat Pirates, she said, lifting her hand lightly. Immediately, an arm grew on Chopper's body and started scratching him. As you can see, I have the ability of the flower flower fruit. I can make any part of my body bloom like a flower and grow on any tangible object. Ha ha ha. Stop it. Don't scratch me. Chopper was itching and rolling on the ground. Robin smiled and released her power. Let's go, I have prepared transportation, we can reach the capital by noon. Upon hearing this, Nami immediately remembered something. What about the prisoners? Bring them along. Soon, the group brought down several prisoners from the Merry Go. Everyone boarded the transportation prepared by Robin, three large carriages, one for men, one for women, and one for the prisoners. Bartolomeo served as the guard and rode with the prisoners. In the latest carriage, Nami curiously asked, Robin, what was the news you mentioned earlier? How is Crocodile? Is everything resolved? Is Luffy okay? A series of questions, Robin had anticipated them and immediately handed out yesterday's newspaper. Luffy has become a Shichibukai. Eh? The ladies were shocked. At noon, the Straw Hat group finally arrived at the capital. Upon learning that they were Luffy's companions, Cobra made time to meet everyone. In the banquet hall. After being separated for two days, the group finally saw their captain. Hey, how are you? Luffy greeted with a smile. Luffy, you idiot, running off by yourself, don't make people worry. Sanji couldn't help but say. Then, they saw Vivi sitting next to Luffy. Ah, haven't seen you in a few days, Miss Vivi. You are still as beautiful and charming, no, even more beautiful and charming than before. Of course, that's natural, after all, she has been nourished. Luffy secretly thought to himself, this is all his hard work. Vivi politely smiled and felt guilty when she saw Nami. Nami knows about her relationship with Luffy. But last night, Emotions got the better of her and she took a step forward unintentionally. But it's okay, they will soon part ways, although Nami feels a bit sorry. On May 1st, she comforted herself. Miss Nami, and everyone, welcome to Alabasta. Vivi. Nami happily went up to her best friend and held her hands. The two of them had a friendly conversation. Luffy glanced at everyone and smiled, saying, The situation in Alabasta has been resolved. Sorry for making you worry. After a long time, Zoro finally got to drink alcohol again and immediately started chugging it down. With a satisfied sound from his mouth, he said, So, when the log pose is fully charged, we can go to the next island, right? We should buy more alcohol then, we gave all the previous alcohol to those two giants. Upon hearing this, Vivi immediately said, It will take five days to fully charge. No, seven days. Luffy shook his head and said, in seven days, it will be Vivi's coming of age ceremony, the princess's adulthood ceremony. You don't want to miss it, right? Everyone showed an interested expression. Oh, the princess's coming of age ceremony, what will it be like? Usopp asked curiously. To this, Luffy smiled and remained silent. Of course, this is just a surface reason. The real reason is that he plans to take Vivi away and let her celebrate this coming of age ceremony with her father. The next time they meet, it might be a year or even two years later. His plan is known only to himself. Vivi, however, is very touched. She also wants everyone to participate in her coming of age ceremony to commemorate the end of this journey. Therefore, she is very happy. Now, let me take you all around this city. After having lunch in the palace, Vivi acted as a guide and took everyone to tour the capital city. 
The Straw Hat crew was all very happy, but there were also some who did not participate. Zorro, Bartolomeo, and Robin stayed behind, after the others left happily. Luffy. Why did you suddenly become a Shichibukai? Zoro asked curiously at the table, it doesn't seem like something you would do with your personality. Huh. This green-haired guy is quite sharp. Luffy thought to himself. Bartolomeo had an expression of admiration on his face, indeed, Luffy-sama, being a Shichibukai is nothing worth mentioning. Robin chuckled lightly, is it because of Ace? The others didn't know, but she was there at the scene and had some guesses about it. Sort of. The situation here is complicated, and you guys wouldn't be able to handle it. You'll know in the future. Luffy smiled and said, You guys, since you've come all the way to Alabasta, why not go sightseeing together? Upon hearing this, Zoro grinned and said, As long as there's alcohol, it's enough. The few of them weren't interested. Luffy sama, how should we deal with those prisoners? Bartolomeo asked, Should we send them to the Marines for a reward? Now that things have settled down, we do need to take care of those prisoners. You guys bring them out first. Robin, I'll leave it to you. Yes, Luffy. Immediately, the three of them got up and left the banquet hall. Luffy turned to look at King Cobra. Now he truly became a father-in-law. King Cobra. Luffy, no need to be polite. King Cobra smiled. As the king, he couldn't possibly not know what happened in the palace. Regarding Luffy and Vivi's matter, he wouldn't stop it or interfere. Everything should go with the flow. After all, it was his daughter's own choice, and he respected Vivi's personal will. After pondering for a moment, Luffy directly asked. The Nefertari family, they are the descendants of the twenty royal families who established the world government eight hundred years ago. King Cobra was taken aback. Not many people know about this. Considering that Luffy comes from a prestigious family, it doesn't seem too strange that he knows about this. He waits quietly for the continuation. Luffy nods and says, What I'm about to tell you might surprise you, and if it spreads to the outside world, it could bring about a serious crisis. Please go on. Cobra's expression becomes serious. Among the twenty kings of the past, there was a person named Nero Im Sama. It might be him, or it might not be. Luffy says with a tone of uncertainty, This person has been alive for 800 years and is still the true ruler of the world government. Although Cobra was somewhat mentally prepared, he still shows a shocked expression. For a moment, he doesn't know what to say. At the headquarters of the world government, there is a vacant throne that symbolizes the unattainable. It represents the equality among the 20 kings internally, but that is just a facade. In reality, I am. The king of the celestial dragons, has always been the owner of the throne, and the five elders obey his commands. Eight hundred years ago, there was indeed a king named Nero Im Sama. Cobra takes a deep breath and is astonished by what Luffy has said. If this information were to leak to the outside world, it would definitely cause a global shock. Luffy. How did you find out about these things? Was it Garp? My father is Monkey D. Dragon. Luffy decisively reveals his background. Cobra. He is dumbfounded. Monkey D. Dragon. Is it that dragon? The leader of the revolutionary army, listed by the world government as the world's most dangerous criminal. What's the deal with this family? Grandfather is a marine hero, son is the leader of the revolutionary army, and grandson is a pirate. Is it really okay to be related to this family? What I said earlier was all background information, just setting the stage. Luffy reassures his father-in-law and says, Actually, what I want to say is, your Nefertari family was once part of the D-Clan, right? The D-Clan, also known as the natural enemies of the gods, and the so-called gods refer to the group of world nobles, the celestial dragons. Of course, Emu. Cobra remains silent for a moment and nods. This is something Vivi doesn't know either. Luffy, what exactly do you want to ask? I want to ask. Luffy wanted to ask if he could take a look at the letter left by Queen Nefertari Vivi. Nefertari D. Vivi, one of the twenty kings from eight hundred years ago. Back then, she chose not to go to Mariajo and become a celestial dragon. Instead, she returned to her homeland, Alabasta. But the strange thing is, the person who later inherited the throne was her younger brother. And she herself, as if in a blank hundred years, disappeared. She only left behind a letter. 
Luffy was quite curious about the contents of this letter. But upon careful consideration, it doesn't seem appropriate to ask Cobra directly now. It might make his father-in-law overthink things. After all, only Cobra himself knows about the letter. Besides him, there is no one else. No, there's nothing I want to ask. Luffy shook his head, got up, and smiled. Cobra, if you ever have the chance to meet the five elders, don't ask anything about the blank hundred years. It will bring disaster upon you. Saying that, he left the banquet hall. When he reached the door, he paused for a moment. As for history, I will know everything when I reach Raftel. At that time, I will let. Tell you. Let your daughter tell you in person. You're really bold to go ask the five elders yourself. You're very brave. And then you'll die without any value. Cobra watched Luffy leave in a daze, lost in thought. So that was a reminder. I am? Cobra furrowed his brows deeply. He was indeed searching for the truth about his ancestor, Queen Nefertari. If it weren't for Luffy's words, he would have really gone to ask the five elders. Karu. After leaving the banquet hall, Luffy saw Karu outside. This big duck was drinking water with a straw, it's really amazing that a duck can use a straw. Quack. Quack. Karu saw Luffy approaching and immediately called out to him twice. Luffy smiled and touched its feathers, are you offering me a drink? Who wants to drink what you've already drunk? Karu, do you want to come with me on an adventure? Quack. Your owner really wants to go on an adventure, but also loves this country too much to leave. I'll take her away, do you want to come with me? Quack. Karu was startled. This human actually wanted to take away its owner? And asked if it wanted to come too? Karu took three seconds to think, then nodded vigorously. Wherever its owner goes, it will go. At this moment, Robin and the others came over with the prisoners. Luffy. Luffy turned around and looked at the prisoners for a moment. Mr. One, Miss Doublefinger. Mr. Two, Mr. Three, Miss Goldenweek. Mr. Five, Miss Valentine. Mr. Nine. A total of eight people, five men and three women. When the eight people saw Luffy, they all looked somewhat fearful. They had read the newspaper and knew that this person in front of them was already one of the seven warlords of the sea. When they first received the mission, they never expected that their target would turn out to be such a formidable character. Luffy calmly said, Your Baroque works Mr. Zero, also known as the former Shichibukai Crocodile, has already been sent to prison by me. How do you plan to deal with us, Straw Hat Luffy? Mr. One remained very calm. His loyal subordinate, Bartolomeo, immediately punched him and said, Watch your tone, prisoner, show some respect to Luffy-sama. Mr. Three smirked and said, Lord Luffy, you don't plan to send us to prison too, do you? What's the benefit of sending you all to prison? It's just a small bounty. The marines won't kill you, since each of you is a devil fruit user. The ultimate result will definitely be imprisonment and impelled down, and who knows, maybe two months later. Blackbeard will cause chaos in Impel Down and you will all come out again. I'll give you two choices. Luffy chuckled lightly and held up two fingers. The first option is to be thrown into the sea and fed to the fish. The second option is to seek forgiveness from Vivi, join the Straw Hat crew, and become a member of the second team. No one would consider the first option. As for the second one, seeking forgiveness from Princess Vivi? Is that even possible? These people have done countless bad things in the past. If they can be forgiven, Vivi would be a saint. What if we're not forgiven? Miss. Valentine trembled. Then, of course, I'll send you to the bottom of the sea to feed the fish, Luffy said matter-of-factly. This is not a threat. He doesn't lack a few more fighters. He's just giving Vivi the decision-making power. If Vivi can truly forgive this group of people, then she will take on the position of the second team captain. If she can't forgive them, then they will be thrown into the sea. Giving them to the marines for a bounty exchange is completely out of the question. If they were sent over, these people wouldn't die, and they might even cause trouble in the future. In short, there are only two choices. Either kill them or recruit them. The decision lies with Vivi. Time flies, and a week passes in the blink of an eye. The palace, dressing room. Princess Vivi, you've grown up. You look exactly like Lady Titi from back then. Is that so? I've only seen my mother's appearance in photos. 
It's almost time for your coming of age ceremony. The queen would be very happy to see you now. The head maid in charge of taking care of Vivi said with a smile on her face. She has watched Vivi grow up, almost like a half daughter. Actually, the coming of age ceremony should have been held when you were 14, but it was delayed for a while. Don't worry, Alabasta will recover soon. We have to thank Mr. Luffy. Without him, I really don't know what would have happened to this country. Yes, Mr. Luffy is a very gentle person, Vivi said with a bright smile when Luffy's name was mentioned. As someone who has been through it, the head maid could naturally tell and laughed along. At this moment, the voice of Ikarim came from outside the door. The captain of the guard had returned to Alabasta five days ago, and when he came back, everything had already settled. At this moment, he stood outside the dressing room. Princess Vivi, the speech will begin at 10 o'clock. A large number of people have already gathered in front of the palace square. I understand, Ikarim, I'll be there soon. No need to rush, this is your coming of age ceremony. You must present the best posture to the people. Yes. In front of the palace square, tens of thousands of people crowded the place. Countless people eagerly looked towards the entrance of the palace. Above the entrance, a platform was built on the city wall. In a few minutes, the princess of Alabasta would appear. Everyone was very excited, and on the best viewing platform. At the top of a building directly facing the podium, the members of the Straw Hat crew stood or sat, waiting for Vivi with smiles on their faces. Ah! Vivi is coming out! Usopp exclaimed. They saw a girl with long sea blue hair, wearing a simple dress, exuding a youthful aura, slowly appearing in their sight. Vivi, who appeared on the podium, scanned the crowd with her eyes and finally spotted the straw hat crew directly opposite. She saw Luffy, smiled slightly, and her eyes turned into crescents. Princess Vivi! Princess Vivi! The jewel of alabasta! The crowd in the square cheered. Vivi picked up the microphone, and her bright voice, like a lark, resounded and spread throughout the country through the Den Den Mushi device. A while ago, I went on an adventure. After the first sentence was spoken, everyone quieted down. It was a journey across the dark sea, searching for days of despair. After leaving this country, I realized how vast the sea is. There are many incredible, vibrant islands, and unseen creatures, and fantastical landscapes. The music played by the waves, at times peaceful and harmonious. Embracing my small troubles, gently transforming into flowing water. At times turbulent and surging, tearing apart my fragile soul. Mocking my cowardice. Vivi's voice is filled with the colors of memories, her speech has no script, no technique, only emotions. In the dark storm, on that hungry day, I encountered two small boats, and those who ride the wind and break the waves. They gently touched my back and said, Can't you see that light? This is a small boat that will never be lost even in the darkness. Dancing over one giant wave after another, they do not fear the sea. Even sailing against the wind, the bow always pointing straight ahead. Afterwards, he pointed ahead and said to me, Kindness, not being a good princess. All I could say was, I'm sorry. He smiled and touched my hair again, Look, that is hope. Although history may call it an illusion, but for me, that is the truth. Vivi smiled and tears flowed, her bright eyes fixed on the straw hat crew across from her. Today, I still have to say, I'm sorry, she couldn't say the words that followed. Because a figure interrupted this touching speech. Luffy appeared on the stage. Vivi had a stunned expression and instinctively shouted. Luffy? There was a commotion in the square below. Luffy pulled Vivi over and snatched the microphone from her hand with a smile. Hey hey, people of Alabasta, good morning. I am Monkey D. Luffy, one of the seven warlords of the sea, and also the new hero who helped you defeat that old man crocodile. To be honest, all of you are a bunch of idiots being played around by crocodile. Everything that happened in this country was planned by him. Dance powder? Rebel army? Assassinations? War? Don't doubt it. He did it all. Of course, you don't need to thank me, and I don't need your thanks either. I just want to teach you all a lesson, pirates are pirates. Before, a despicable Shichibukai came here, wanting to take away your country. Today, another Shichibukai has come, and he wants to take away your princess. Ha ha ha. 
Luffy laughed and threw away the microphone, carrying Vivi as he leapt over the heads of the people in the square. Goodbye, people of Alabasta. Goodbye, King Cobra. I've taken your daughter. Everything happened so shockingly. To the point where everyone's brains were still in a state of shutdown. Vivi was the same, being held with a bewildered expression. W wait, Mr. Luffy. I can't wait, guys, it's time to set sail. Luffy shouted to his companions. Oh, bang. The door to the room was violently pushed open. Captain of the guards, Ikarim, rushed in anxiously. Your Majesty, Princess Vivi has been kidnapped. On the single sofa by the window, King Cobra, dressed in a burgundy robe, held a glass of red wine in his hand. He smiled as he watched the commotion outside the window. Upon hearing Ikarim's urgent voice, he turned his head and said, No need to panic, Ikarim, but, Your Majesty, Vivi. She will be fine. Cobra smiled. If it were any other pirate, he would have been worried. A kidnapped princess would either become a bargaining chip for blackmailing the king or a plaything in the slave market. But if it was Luffy who took Vivi, it wouldn't be like that. Firstly, he was the grandson of a marine hero, and he was also the hero who saved this country. Moreover, he was Vivi's beloved. Secondly, the straw hat pirates were Shichibukai, and their bounties were frozen. There wouldn't be any bounty hunters targeting them and the marines wouldn't pursue the straw hat pirates. Vivi also wants to go on an adventure, right? Let her go. She must have been suffering for this country for the past two years. Cobra stood up and walked to the window, looking at Vivi, who was taken away by Luffy, and said softly. After experiencing a broader world, when she returns, she will definitely become a qualified queen. Your Majesty. Icarum's face was blank. But influenced by Cobra, he quickly calmed down. I'm a little reluctant. Will Princess Vivi be able to eat well on this journey? What if she gets sick? Can Dr. Chopper cure her? Will she have conflicts with Miss Robin? Ha ha ha. You're overthinking, Ikarim. Vivi has grown up. After her coming of age ceremony, she has become an extraordinary princess. Cobra laughed heartily. Looking at Vivi gradually disappearing from view outside the window, the old father muttered blessings in his heart. Be healthy and happy, Vivi. Mr. Luffy, please, please put me down. Being held by Luffy, and in front of tens of thousands of citizens, Vivi's face turned bright red, and she could only resist with her voice. No, if I put you down, you won't really go. Luffy grinned. Now being held, Vivi was in a state where she couldn't resist and could only accept it. Once she was put down, she would become someone who couldn't abandon her country, saying, I am a princess, I cannot abandon this country. The sea is vast, and there are many adventures waiting for you ahead. The Emerald City, Sky Island, the Fishman Kingdom under the sea, the giant tribes Elbaf. Don't you want to see them? Listening to the temptation of her loved one, Vivi bit her lip and angrily said, You're really cunning, Luffy. Because she was a little angry, she didn't even call him, Mr. anymore. See, even your dad agreed. Dad. Vivi turned her head and looked towards the direction of the palace, seeing her father's smiling face through a small window. Her dad didn't stop her, but the citizens were shouting. Damn Shichibukai. Let go of Princess Vivi. We won't spare you. Stinking pirates, how dare you take away our Princess Vivi. Chase them. We absolutely cannot let Alabasta's gem be taken away. A massive crowd. The people spontaneously chased after the Straw Hat crew. It seems like everyone really likes you. If I get caught, will they beat me to death? Luffy laughed. They will definitely beat you up. Vivi chuckled. Well then, I can't let them catch me. Vivi gradually tightened her grip around his neck, and her resistance in her mindset became submissive as they moved further away from the palace. Luffy. What's wrong? I deeply love this country, but I also love you. Take me with you. Vivi buried her head in his embrace, her eyes curved like a crescent moon, and she spoke touching words full of happiness. Luffy paused for a moment, grinned, and said, Then hold on tight. A wavering princess sometimes only needs a little push to take a brave step forward. We are a hundred steps apart, and you have taken ninety nine steps. I don't want to disappoint you in this last step either. Vivi thought happily in her heart, and her slender and delicate arms tightened around him. With thousands of people chasing after them, 
Luffy carried Vivi and rushed out of the royal palace. The people loved the princess very much. Even though some would drop out due to exhaustion, there would always be new citizens joining the pursuit. Running and talking at the same time. After a grand crowd of people ran for over an hour, they arrived at a beach to the east of the capital. The Sunny and Mary were both docked here. We've been waiting for you, Luffy, Vivi. Nami stood at the ship's edge, hands on her hips, and smiled. Ah, Miss Vivi. You've finally come. Sanji called out enthusiastically. Get on the ship. Zoro grinned. Nice to see you again, Princess Vivi. Robin smiled gently and spoke. Anyway, let's hurry and run, ha ha ha. Usopp laughed heartily. Welcome back, Miss Vivi. Kaya expressed her welcome. Luffy, I'll stop the pursuers behind us. Bartolomeo made a gesture to activate his ability. In the next moment, a huge barrier opened up, blocking countless people behind Luffy and Vivi. On the coast, Luffy leapt lightly and finally jumped onto the sunny, holding Vivi in his arms. Set sail, he immediately gave the captain's order. In the next moment, both ships quickly lowered their sails and slowly moved away from the coast. Damn it! Why does a place like this have walls? Devil fruit user! Damn it! Princess Vivi! The crowd gasped for breath, pounding on the barrier. Look, it's the Marines! Someone spotted a warship approaching from the sea. Hey, Marines! Pirates are trying to steal our princess! Countless people shouted in unison, placing their hopes on the passing warship. Marines? Indeed, Usopp's face turned green with fear. Meanwhile, the Marines heard the cries of the crowd and saw two pirate ships, as well as the princess being held by the pirates. Colonel Smoker, its straw hat Luffy, a lookout put down his binoculars and quickly reported the situation. Smoker, who had left Logue Town and come to the Grand Line to pursue greater strength, took the cigar out of his mouth and frowned as he snatched the binoculars. Straw hat Luffy, and the princess of alabasta what are those people shouting colonel it seems they're shouting that straw hat luffy has taken their princess and they want us to retrieve her a marine was a bit confused fire smoker full of righteousness coldly gave the order warning shots you go and negotiate tell him to hand over the princess the marines on the warship looked dumbfounded we we can't do that colonel smoker he's a shichibukai a captain immediately stepped forward to stop him. So what if he's a Shichibukai? Are my orders useless? Shouldn't it be your duty to watch a princess being taken away? Smoker's face darkened. The captain immediately fell silent. Firing at a Shichibukai. No, before that, that guy is Vice Admiral Garp's grandson. No, no, absolutely not. Without orders from above, attacking a Shichibukai, once done, the colonel would be in deep trouble, and might even have to go to the marine court. HMPH, what a bunch of useless people. Smoker's face was full of displeasure as he threw his binoculars to the captain and walked to the bow of the ship, shouting. Straw hat Luffy. Smoker? Luffy put Vivi down and raised an eyebrow. This guy came to the Grand Line too. Even if you're a Shichibukai, kidnapping a princess from an allied country is still illegal, Smoker warned. The key word here is, allied country, marine can't interfere with non-allied countries. Luffy laughed, long time no see, have you improved your skills? Daring to shout in front of him, it seems that the previous punch was too light. What do you mean long time no see? Smoker's face turned ugly as he threatened loudly, hand over the princess. Otherwise, I will report your criminal activities to the government and your Shichibukai title will be revoked. Unlike the situation with Crocodile, Luffy is caught in the act. It is indeed illegal, but whether his title will be revoked is hard to say. Luffy's mouth curled up, he didn't care at all. Don't you understand what background means? It's just kidnapping a princess, her father is willing, aren't you? Who do you think you are? However, he remained calm and composed, while Vivi was anxious. She quickly stepped forward and shouted, I'm doing this willingly. Smoker. Citizens. What are you saying, Princess Vivi? The citizens exclaimed in shock. Were you threatened? Vivi shook her head and smiled, shouting to the citizens. I'm sorry, everyone, please go back. I want to continue this adventure for a while longer. 
and please apologize to my father for me. I want to truly experience the vastness of the sea. It will definitely be a journey full of rewards. It doesn't seem like a threat, but a sincere call. The people who have managed to make it here are the ones who truly care about and protect the princess. Everyone looked at each other and ultimately chose to respect the will of Her Royal Highness. Since Princess Vivi said so, then there's nothing we can do. Princess Vivi, please stay safe. Monkey D. Luffy, you bastard, you better protect the princess. If anything happens to her, the people of Alabasta will never forgive you. As the commotion gradually subsided, Luffy chuckled lightly. All right, guys, let's set sail. The ship changed its course and, guided by Nami, headed towards the deep sea. Goodbye, smoker. I hope the next time we meet, you'll be a little stronger. Otherwise, your threats will just be a joke. On the warship, upon hearing Luffy's mockery, Smoker's face turned red with anger. Bastard. What voluntary. I'm just a clown. He clenched his fist in frustration. Colonel. The captain cautiously called out. That's why I said, don't get involved in Shichibukai's affairs if it's not necessary, it's not something a colonel should be concerned about. If you want to communicate on an equal footing with the Shichibukai, you should at least be a vice admiral in the marine headquarters. Land. Smoker took a deep breath and calmly gave the order, I'm going to see the king. Whether it's voluntary or not doesn't matter. What matters is the king's attitude. If the king wants to investigate, he must report to the marine headquarters. As for the king not wanting to investigate, it's really not his concern. Perhaps in the eyes of others, this is unnecessary, but it is his sense of justice. Naval Headquarters, Marine Ford. A military ship docked in the inner bay, and Marine Admiral Aokiji, known as Aokiji, and real name Kuzan, with the ability of the Logia frozen fruit, let out a sigh and walked down from the ship's plank. Naval Headquarters, the highest combat power. Aokiji Admiral. As soon as he got off the ship, the many Marines in front of the military port immediately saluted, their eyes filled with admiration. Ilala. Why are so many people gathered here? Did pirates attack headquarters? Aokiji scratched his head. Don't joke around. How could pirates possibly attack headquarters? A colonel, with a speechless expression, saluted and said, You just returned from the New World, it must have been a tough journey. After a pause, he continued, The fleet admiral asked me to wait here for you. Sangoku wants to see me. Aokiji's face showed a disgusted expression. He had just completed a mission and returned. Ah, being an admiral is such a busy life. No wonder Mr. Garp has always refused promotion. I understand, really. Helpless, Aokiji had no choice but to go to the headquarters fortress. Although that's the case, he could delay for a second. He first went to his own admiral's office and sat for a while, lying down and sleeping for half an hour. After being reminded multiple times by his subordinates, he reluctantly went upstairs to the wind temple. As soon as Sengoku saw Aokiji enter, he said in a displeased tone, You're too lazy, Kuzan. The two four emperors in the new world are about to meet, and I almost couldn't come back. Aokiji sat on the sofa, poured himself a cup of tea, and said, Can you let me rest for a bit? What's the situation? Sengoku's expression became serious when it came to the four emperors. Aokiji answered, most of the surveillance ships over there have been sunk, so we can't get close to monitor or observe. The specific reason is unknown. And the red hair pirates came specifically to warn me. Admiral, no matter how strong you are, you are still just one person. On the other side, there is a complete four emperors pirate crew. If you don't leave, then we'll fight. Of course, Aokiji cannot fight with red hair and the others, so he can only retreat to a safe distance. And then, he was called back. Sangoku fell into deep thought. Why would red hair and whitebeard make contact? Could it affect the stability of the world? The movements of these two four emperors are not ordinary. The main task of the marines is to maintain the balance of the Grand Line. So, why did you call me back? Aokiji yawned and lay on the sofa, pulling down the eye mask on his forehead. If there's nothing, I'll go back to sleep. It's Nico Robin. With a sudden movement, Aokiji sat up, took off his eye mask, and had a surprised expression on his face. Sangoku continued, This woman used to hide behind Crocodile, but now that Crocodile is gone, 
she has infiltrated the Straw Hat Pirate Crew. The Straw Hat Pirate Crew? Aokiji frowned. Of course, he knew about this newly emerged pirate crew. The captain, Monkey D. Luffy, is Garp's grandson, and he is now a Shichibukai. It's impossible not to know about him. Aokiji, you need to capture Nico Robin. It's a request from higher up. Straw Hat Luffy? I don't care about him. Just bring back that woman. What I mean is, if he tries to stop me, what should I do? How far can I go? Don't kill anyone. Sangoku's face was serious. That's also taken into consideration by higher ups. Understand. The devil's child, Nico Robin, must be brought back. Even if Straw Hat Luffy has potential, he is still far from being able to stop you. After a pause, thinking about Aokiji's relationship with Garp as master and disciple, Sengoku warned again with seriousness, I don't need to repeat the importance of this matter, right? That woman holds the key to unlocking the devil. Upon hearing this, Aokiji scratched his head, got up, and walked out of the office. Understood, I'll do my best. Not long after, the Marine Admiral's warship set sail from Marineford, approaching the route of the Straw Hat crew. The Sunny and Mary sailed out of the waters of Alabasta, heading towards their next destination, braving the wind and waves. Vivi stood at the front of the deck, her sea blue hair being blown about by the sea breeze. The boundless ocean brought a pleasant mood. Ah, the sea, I'm back! Vivi exclaimed happily. The people on the deck laughed one after another. Nami walked over. Actually, there's something I want to ask for your opinion on. Nami. Vivi turned around and saw Nami, instantly feeling guilty. Oh no, I'm such a bad woman. If I had known it would turn out like this, I shouldn't have done that that night. Should I just confess to Nami? Will I be forgiven? She hesitated and secretly glanced at Luffy, only to see him with an expression of watching a show. That damn guy. What's wrong, Vivi? Are you feeling unwell? Nami blinked her eyes. No. It's nothing. Vivi quickly put away her unnecessary thoughts, unable to confess, and could only temporarily keep it from Nami. I'm sorry, Miss Nami. What did you want to ask for my opinion on? It's like this. Nami also glanced at Luffy and explained everything about the prisoners and the second team in detail. I see. I understand, Nami said after listening. After hearing it, Vivi pondered for a moment. Luffy. What do you want me to do? The girl's mouth curved upwards, her eyebrows and eyes forming a smile as bright as the blooming Sakura in the morning sun. I made you watch just now. HMPH. You're such a big, bad egg. Luffy helplessly said, it all depends on your heart. You can decide how to deal with them. Incorporating them as members of the second team is just one suggestion. I want to meet them first. I'll take you there. Luffy had just finished speaking when Vivi ran over on her own. She used Moonwalk and easily jumped onto the Mary. 2. Almost forgot that this girl knows Moonwalk and Finger Pistol. Hum. Speaking of which, I should quickly teach her the other four techniques as well. Nami has them, so Vivi should have them too, otherwise it could cause problems. Thinking this, he also jumped over. Mary, Deck. What is this? When Vivi came over, she happened to see Sanji, Zoro, and others gathered in a circle. In front of everyone was a huge conch shell. Two eyes were lit up like mosquito coils, resembling ancient ammonite creatures. I don't know. Usopp just caught a 583 earlier. Sanji tapped it with his hand, pondering, I don't know if it's edible. I don't think it's edible. Vivi broke out in a cold sweat on her forehead, look, there are iron handles on its sides, is it a hatch? It really is. Several big men only noticed this now. At this moment, Luffy walked over and remembered when he saw this thing. It's a special submarine. Luffy. Everyone greeted him. Then, with a clang. The huge ammonite shell opened, and a man with a simple appearance crawled out. Oh, I thought I was done for. Hello, hello, hello. He rubbed his head and nodded to the people around him one by one. Who are you? Suddenly popping out like that, scared the hell out of me. Bartolomeo clenched his fist. Everyone looked at the man one after another. Under his simple appearance, his small eyes occasionally flashed a cunning light. Oh dear, oh dear, excuse me, let me introduce myself. 
The man touched his head and bowed in apology. I am a ladybug mail order delivery person who can be called upon by a phone call to deliver goods to you. Please give me your guidance. The tone was so much like a salesperson that no one doubted it. Ladybug mail order delivery, what is that? Zoro looked disgusted. Yes, when I was delivering goods on the Ace Card submarine, I suddenly encountered a strong typhoon. It blew me to the east and then to the west, and in the end, I perished. Lyles described the situation with exaggerated gestures, and everyone rolled their eyes. Ha ha ha, I'm really sorry, thank you for saving me. To express my gratitude, I will give you this popular shaking stick from our company. He took out a shaking stick from the submarine, which had iron balls on both ends. As long as you hold the middle part and shake it gently, the weights on both ends will make the stick swing back and forth continuously. Everyone. Usopp said, what's the use of this thing? It's just useless. Johnny and Joseph nodded in agreement, is your company a junk shop? N O N O N O. Our company focuses on customer experience and fully understands customer needs. Since you don't like the shaking stick, we also have this. Lyles took out another item. It was a pink pig toy with handles on both sides of its body, allowing people to hold it and slide it back and forth on the ground, exercising their waist strength. This is a popular product, the well-known Apua Apua Slide Slide Fun. Then, there was a grandiose boast, turning an ordinary children's toy into a high-tech fitness equipment. Zoro couldn't help but comment, who would need this? Chopper and Usopp's eyes were already sparkling. There's a chance. Lyle's money sense immediately kicked in, and he quickly increased his efforts, unbelievably, this latest hot item is only. Today. His words suddenly got stuck. A pair of eyes saw Luffy behind Chopper and Usopp. His mouth kept moving, sweating profusely in the end. Only. Only. What is it? Luffy laughed. Gudong. Lysilezi swallowed his saliva and quickly came up with a plan. 7. Shichibukai. Upon closer inspection, isn't that green algae head next to it the pirate hunter with a bounty of 19 million? Is this the straw hat pirate's ship? Oh no. Of course it's free. He announced loudly. That's great, you're such a good person. Usopp exclaimed happily, quickly grabbing the slip slip fruit and playing with Chopper. Lysilezi breathed a sigh of relief quickly bowed, and buried one foot into the submarine. Well, the gratitude has been delivered, and I still have. Do you have any paper? Shock. Lysilezi's escape action froze, and the forced smile on his face became even more bitter. My navigator likes to draw sea charts, and the paper consumption has been quite high lately. Give me some, the best quality. Lysilezi was speechless, quickly pulling out a thick layer of paper from the warehouse. Out of habit, he started to boast. Luffy wasn't interested and took a quick look at the paper. The quality was indeed good, and he nodded in satisfaction. How much? Shock X2, he has to pay. Would Shichibuka actually pay? It's like a dream. These people who have the legal qualification to plunder would actually pay, that's ridiculous. Isn't the paper enough? He once again took out a new product, a high quality kitchen knife. Sanji's eyes lit up. It's really a good kitchen knife. How much? Shock X3. Still not enough. Damn it, spare me. Lysilezi cried as she took out the third item. Oh, I like this one. How much is it? Long grinned. No, stop it. Take it, all of it. Lysilezi threw out a large pile of goods from the warehouse, then jumped into the cabin and slammed the door shut. Without looking back, he went into the sea. What's wrong with this guy? Usopp said in astonishment, he doesn't even take the money? Is the company going bankrupt? Maybe he's in a hurry to remember that he has unfinished work and needs to deliver the goods, Zoro pondered and gave an answer. You idiot, he must be in a hurry to remember that he has unfinished work and needs to deliver the goods, Zoro pondered and gave an answer. But for you, with your green seaweed head, thinking about needing to pee is already an above average performance, so don't feel inferior. What did you say? You perverted chef. Huh. Be careful, I'll cut you into eight pieces. I'll kick you into a pile of minced meat. They started their usual quarrel. Vivi laughed uncontrollably. It's because he's afraid of Mr. Luffy. If he encounters a Shichibukai at sea and gets robbed, no one will care. Oh, I see, 
Chopper clapped his right paw against his left paw, suddenly realizing. That's scary, Luffy. That's scary, Luffy. Usopp turned into a parrot. Asterisk 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 Luffy said speechlessly, I was going to pay, but he ran away on his own. Without considering the merchant's price increase, it wouldn't have cost much. But since we got something for free, why not enjoy it together? Afterwards, Vivi met eight prisoners. These prisoners, who were very clear about their own situation, knelt down one after another to express their remorse and ask for forgiveness. As for how sincere they were, that couldn't be investigated. Seriously speaking, this group of people were just killers and agents who carried out orders, they were knives for killing, and it would be strange if they reflected on their actions. The way these people act depends on their leader. In the end, Vivi agreed to their request to join the group. Recruiting crew members. Eight people, a total of 1500 adventure coins, an average of 187.5 per person. Adventure coins. 5545 right pointing arrow 7045 adventure coins are being spent more and more. Luffy said to Bartolomeo, Barto, you will be the vice captain of the second team, and you will lead these five male members. Yes, Luffy sama, please leave it to me. As for you three, Shojishu, Valentine, and Golden Week, follow Vivi's orders. The daily cleaning of the Sunny will be entrusted to you. Yes, Luffy sama. The three women dared not disagree and expressed their submission. If you really think about it, following Luffy is more promising than following Crocodile. The background is different. The background is very important when mixing in this vast sea. Back to the sunny. When they left, there were two people, but now there are five. As the lowest ranking special agents, the three women started working, cleaning, and expressing their enthusiasm for work. When they saw Robin not needing to work, sitting alone on a beach chair on the deck, leisurely enjoying afternoon tea with a book, they couldn't help but envy. Why is that? We are all former members of criminal organizations. Seemingly aware of their gaze, Robin looked up and smiled slightly. You've worked hard. Yes, miss. Sunday. Just call me by my name, there's no need to use that code name anymore. Understood. Robin Sama. At this moment, Nami walked out of the cabin. Luffy handed her the paper that Rayleigh had given him and said, Here, you should need this. Thank you, Luffy. Nami's eyes lit up, and she kissed him on the cheek. This time, Vivi felt envious. It's so nice to be able to openly express affection to Mr. Luffy. She wouldn't dare to do that. At least not in front of Nami. Miss Nami, what are these papers for? Vivi asked curiously. Of course, they're for drawing sea charts and making a complete world map. It's my dream. Nami smiled and took her friend's hand. I see. Mr. Luffy remembered Miss Nami's dream, so he asked for these papers. Vivi secretly glanced at Luffy. She also wanted to be loved. Are you interested? Nami shared her joy. Perfect. I'm planning to draw a sea chart of our journey from East Blue. Vivi wasn't very interested in sea charts, but she was very interested in the adventures in East Blue. Really? Can you tell me about it? Let's go, I'll take you to the drawing room. The two women left together. Luffy rubbed his chin, thinking about how to solve the problem between Vivi and Nami. And we have a new ship now, so the number of people has increased. The Sunny can still accommodate everyone, but the Mary is getting crowded. On the Sunny, the permanent female residents are Nami, Vivi, Robin, Kaya, Nefertari Vivi, and the three female agents, making a total of eight people. On the Mary, the crew members are Zoro, Usopp, Sanji, Bartolomeo, Joseph, Johnny, and the five male agents, making a total of 11 people. As for Captain Luffy, sometimes he stays on the Sunny and sleeps with Nami, and sometimes he goes to the Mary and sleeps with the men. But now it's not possible anymore, the Mary is really too crowded. It seems like we need to buy a new ship. Should we wait until we reach Water 7? You have sailed in the Sea of Paradise for two days, and you have been rewarded with 200 adventure coins. Adventure coins. 7045 right pointing arrow 7245. Luffy, we can already see the island. Zoro, who was sleeping on the lookout tower of the Merry Go, shouted below. Luffy sat on the figurehead of the Merry Go and squinted his eyes slightly at the words. In the far distance of the field of vision, 
the traces of the island could be vaguely seen. Suddenly, the sky darkened. What's wrong? What's wrong? Usopp hurriedly ran out. The next moment, a shadow enveloped the entire ship, and everyone on the deck was startled. Luffy looked up. A huge ship, extremely dilapidated and with a displacement dozens of times that of the Merry Go, descended from the sky. Countless debris fell into the water first, causing waves to splash. In an instant, everyone's expressions froze, and they looked up with their mouths wide open. A ship fell from the sky, Sanji said incredulously. Luffy, did you see that? Usopp exclaimed. Luffy, Chopper was frightened. Luffy Sama. Bartolomeo widened his eyes. Even the members of the secret agent group had stunned expressions on their faces. The only person who remained relatively calm was Zoro. Why would a ship fall from the sky? He even pondered, is there a sea in the sky? Are you an idiot? How can there be a sea in the sky? Sanji shook his head repeatedly. Boom. The huge ship fell into the water, causing massive waves to crash against the Mary Go's hull. Luffy smiled and said, no, there really is. This time, Zoro won, Sanji. What? Sanji was stunned. Not only is there a sea, but there are also many sky islands. Luffy looked up at the sky, embarking on a journey that was unimaginable in his previous life. Our next destination is, the island in the sky. A ship that descended from the sky was a pirate ship. It was not the same ship as in the original story. Luffy remembered very clearly that the ship in the original story was an exploration ship from a certain country in the South Blue, while the ship they encountered had a pirate flag hanging. After the large ship landed, the waves it caused made the Mary go sway continuously. At the same time, the Sunny Go, Nami and the others finally noticed the situation outside and went up to the deck one after another. What's going on? A ship fell from the sky. Look at that flag, it's the celestial pirates. Robin crossed her arms and supported her cheek with one hand, saying softly, they were a pirate crew from about 18 years ago. The captain, surfing board Serence, had a bounty of 480 million at the time. Robin, how do you know so much? Vivi blinked her eyes, full of curiosity. Because. This pirate crew is from the West Blue, and I joined them when I was a child. Robin calmly talked about her past, at that time, those people wanted to hand me over to the government, so I escaped. I think I was only 10 years old back then. Vivi didn't know much about Robin's past, only that she was an orphan from O'Hara. Luffy mentioned it before in Whiskey Peak, it seemed like she had been hunted by the world government for 20 years. How pitiful, Vivi suddenly sympathized with Robin. It was hard to imagine her past. Compared to her, Vivi's experiences in the past two years were nothing. Ah! Suddenly, Nami exclaimed. What's wrong, Nami? Nefertari Vivi walked over to her sister. The log pose is broken. Nami looked at the pointer on her wrist, which now pointed to the sky. I had filled it with magnetism in Alabasta, why did it become like this? It must have been captured by a stronger magnetic force and the magnetism has changed. If it points to the sky, it means there is a sky island above the sea area. Robin looked up at the sky, but of course, she couldn't see any islands with her naked eye. Moreover, the sky at this moment was relatively dim, as if a storm was about to come. Sky island? Everyone's faces were full of astonishment. Nami said in doubt, does sky island really exist? What if the log pose is broken? Nami, when sailing in the Grand Line, anything can happen. As a navigator, you can doubt everything, but don't doubt the log pose. Robin smiled slightly and said, although I have never seen Sky Island, this time we might have the chance to see it. Sky Island? Vivi was filled with anticipation, thinking of the words Luffy had said to her before. Emerald City, Sky Island, Fishman Island. Upon hearing this, Nami immediately nodded and shouted, Luffy. The Mary Go. Luffy heard Nami's call and turned his gaze towards her. What's wrong? Just as the words fell, Nami jumped over with Moonwalk, followed by Vivi. Robin said there is Sky Island up there. That's true. So, are we going to Sky Island next? How do we get there? How to get there? If it were just Luffy alone, he would have gone up there in fifth gear on the spot. By the knock upstream, he explained. 
When cold seawater flows into the large cavity at the bottom of the sea and the tremendous steam pressure generated by geothermal energy causes an explosion, this kind of current appears. Where is this knock upstream? Vivi asked. I don't know. Luffy gave her a blank look. He wasn't a god, how could he know everything? Don't treat me like Doraemon. Hey, Sky Island, Sky Island, Sky Island. Usopp and Chopper, who were still shocked earlier, instantly changed their attitude. Quickly think of a way, Almighty Luffy, we want to go play on Sky Island. Usopp pleaded while pulling Chopper to dance. Luffy. Where did this captain come from? If you go to Sky Island, you'll have a hard time. Enel the God will give you an internet addiction treatment package, Usopp Kuhn. Muttering in his heart, suddenly, hum, Luffy focused his gaze and looked towards the distant sea. Accompanied by the sound of drums and gongs, a huge pirate ship was approaching. What's going on this time? Sanji lit a cigarette, and everyone gathered at the bow of the ship. Soon, the pirate ship approached the landing point. Squeak. Hey, are you guys here to salvage wreckage too? A man who looked like an orangutan shouted loudly at the crowd. Around him were numerous pirates. Ah, an orangutan. An orangutan, huh? That's definitely an orangutan. No, maybe it's a monkey. Chopper, that guy is just like you, he ate the human human fruit, right? Zoro and the others each spoke a sentence. The orangutan's ears twitched, as if he had heard a wonderful compliment, and he shyly smiled. What? Are you saying I'm monkey like? He sounded quite proud. Even if you say nice things, I can't let you have the wreckage. I am the captain of the orangutan pirates, the salvage king. Usopp had a speechless expression on his face. No, 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 we're not praising you, we're saying you look like an orangutan. You really know how to talk, you brat. The orangutan touched his head, feeling a bit embarrassed. Everyone. Ha ha ha, orangutan, are you guys from Gaia Island? Luffy laughed and said, Can you take us there? Huh. Are you guys going to Gaia Island? That's where pirates gather. The orangutan finally noticed the flags hanging on the merry and sunny. What the heck, you guys are pirates too. After a pause, he nodded in agreement. After I salvage this. As soon as he finished speaking, his expression gradually became fearful. What's wrong with this guy? Zoro squinted his eyes and followed the other's gaze. In the far distance of their field of vision, a small island was moving towards them. No, that wasn't an island. It was an incredibly huge creature. Luffy. What I saw just now. It's not an island. Zoro said in shock. What is that? Turtle. An incredibly huge turtle. Luffy's observation hockey captured the target's presence. At this moment, a shadow suddenly appeared on the nearby water surface. Boom. The shadow broke through the sea surface and let out a roar. The bone shaking sound made the members of the Straw Hat Pirates cover their ears. When the crew turned their heads, they saw a gigantic whale, their faces turning pale with fear. What is this again? He murmured in shock. Laboon, Sanji exclaimed, Luffy, what is Laboon saying? Chopper, seeing Laboon for the first time, immediately entered the state of the animal pre-translator. It says, go away. Don't come closer. Is it warning that huge turtle? Zoro looked surprised. Luffy shook his head and reassured. It's okay, don't worry, Laboon. Laboon stopped roaring and turned its huge eyes towards Luffy, letting out a gentle call. Chopper translated, Captain Luffy, that thing is dangerous, it's hungry and wants to eat us. After saying that, he startled himself, huh? Does that big turtle want to eat us? While the crew was talking, the gigantic turtle had already approached within a hundred meters. Its enormous body was even bigger than Laboon. At this moment, the scene on the sea surface was incredibly eerie. The smallest was the Merry Go. Next was the Sunny Go, several times larger than the Merry Go. After that was the Straw Hat Pirate's pirate ship, which was tens of times larger than the Sunny Go. And even larger than this pirate ship was Laboon. But that turtle was several times larger than Laboon. The huge difference in size made everyone feel a chill. It seems like today is not suitable for salvage. Run. The Monkey D pirates decisively abandoned the wreckage and shouted to Luffy and the others, Hey, if you want to go to Water 7, you'll have to catch up on your own. I won't wait for you. 
He had just finished speaking when darkness fell. The previously dim sky became even darker at this moment. Shadows enveloped everyone's heads. Nami was startled and mechanically turned around. At a glance, her pupils suddenly contracted. Lu. Luffy. One by one, everyone turned around, their faces becoming stiff. Behind everyone were the silhouettes of three towering giants. Those giants had a pair of small wings on their backs, and their height pierced through the sea and the sky. Compared to them, the approaching turtle in the distance was as small and cute as an ant. Ah 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 ah. Nami and Vivi hugged Luffy together and screamed in fear. It's just a projection, a projection of the people from Sky Island. Luffy said helplessly, don't panic, hurry and catch up with that ship. As for that turtle. As he spoke, his gaze became focused. Boom. Terrifying conqueror's hockey erupted from Luffy's body, and black and red lightning bolts were born in the air. They were like the tentacles of a demon, quickly spreading towards the turtle. Get lost. The strong will of the conqueror instantly made the turtle break out in a cold sweat. It immediately dove into the sea and escaped. Not long after. Phew. So it was just a projection of the people from Sky Island. It really scared me. After escaping from the dark area, Nami breathed a sigh of relief after listening to Luffy's explanation. Vivi still held onto Luffy's arm, her face pale. If those giants really exist, it would be too terrifying. Unimaginably huge. If they truly exist, their height would probably be several thousand or tens of thousands of meters. Luffy, I can see the shadow of an island. It should be the Jaya Island you mention. On the lookout tower, Zoro shouted, the ship of that ape man is about to enter the harbor. Got it. Let's catch up. Suddenly, Luffy abruptly extended his hand and blocked Vivi in front of him. His expression turned cold. What? What's wrong, Mr. Luffy? Vivi was taken aback. It was the first time she had seen such a terrifying expression on Luffy's face. Damn it. Luffy released his clenched fist, and a bullet fell from his palm. Asking for trouble. What? A bullet. Sanji's face was filled with shock. Where did the sniper come from? A sniper? That's impossible. Could it be from the island? Usopp said dumbfoundedly. Hey, hey, don't joke around. It's at least 10 kilometers away, right? Luffy. He looked at Luffy, but saw Luffy staring in the direction of the island with a terrifying gaze. Usopp swallowed his saliva. Is it true? What kind of sniper can shoot someone from 10 kilometers away? You guys come over slowly, I'll go settle the score with him first. Luffy pulled his arm out of Vivi's embrace and immediately entered second gear swoosh with a movement he shot up like a missile and swiftly flew towards the direction of galila island terrifying terrifying is this what a shichabukai is like galila island the top of a low building a man held a long spear wearing a strange hat and a black cloak even without any preparation and without using observation hockey he can still react he's simply a monster could it be advanced observation hockey the man whispered softly then saw a figure swiftly flying towards him. Immediately, his expression changed. He's angry? Without thinking too much, the man quickly put away his spear and leapt off the building. Run. What else is there to do if not run? Wait for death? Acting on impulse? Shouldn't have tested this Shichabukai. Believing that the other party is just a mere 71 million, thinking that their strength might be average, and going to snipe them with the idea that they might be able to take them down, is one thing. The key is, it missed. The bullet hit the woman next to him. My observation hockey is not up to par, to think that I would miss from this distance. No, maybe it was the influence of the wind. The wind is a bit noisy today. Regardless, let's run first. Boom. The man ran while reflecting on his mistake. However, when he ran only a few hundred meters away, a figure fell from the sky. Landing on the street ahead, it raised a thick cloud of smoke. The nearby pedestrians. No, the nearby pirates were all shocked and looked towards the smoke. What happened? An explosion. No, something fell. A human? Everyone stared in astonishment at the smoke. The man with a straw hat hanging on his neck stood up straight expressionlessly, his gaze locked onto the opponent. Now that you've fired, be prepared to die, alright? Luffy calmly spoke, 
raising his fist and stepping towards the other party. That's a distance of 10 kilometers. A few seconds? 40 seconds? No, even shorter. The man holding a long spear showed an expression of disbelief. Wait. Wait. I just fired a greeting shot, I didn't mean to be your enemy. Luffy continued to approach. The man instinctively took a half step back and said again. Just one shot, with your strength, there's no way you could be hurt. Luffy's fist was wrapped in conqueror's hockey. A burst of black and red lightning erupted, and the terrifying power seemed to stir up a hurricane on the ground. The man's face changed drastically, hastily retreating and shouting. My captain is very interested in you and wants to talk to you. I deliberately waited here for you, seven warlords of the sea monkey D. Luffy. Seven warlords of the sea. The surrounding pirates stared wide-eyed, their faces full of astonishment, fixated on the straw hat. Indeed, he looks familiar. I saw him recently in the news. Is this kid the new Shichabukai? Enough noise. Luffy flashed forward, instantly approaching the man, his fist wrapped in conqueror's hockey, fiercely striking down. Boom. In the instant before his fist made contact with the man's face, the terrifying power had already knocked him flat on the ground. The man spat out blood with a wow, his entire head flattened. The next moment. Boom. A huge explosion almost overturned half of the town. The earth rolled up and the frenzied black and red lightning roamed in the atmosphere, leaving no grass behind wherever it went. Innocent onlookers were swept up and blown away by the leaked conqueror's hockey. For a moment, screams filled the air. The terrifying power lasted for nearly half a minute. When everything returned to calm and the smoke cleared, half of the small town had been leveled, with a huge crater formed within hundreds of meters from where Luffy stood and the person who had previously sniped at him now lay in the center of the huge pit like a dead dog. No, it was a dead dog, he was already dead. The sniper from the Blackbeard Pirates. Luffy lifted the body and casually said, what was his name again? Something card. I forgot. Blackbeard Pirates, Captain Blackbeard, Marshal D. Teach. This person is the target pursued by Ace. On Whitebeard's ship, Blackbeard killed his comrades and stole a devil fruit known as the most wicked power in devil fruit history, the dark fruit, before deserting the Whitebeard pirates. Afterward, he established his own Blackbeard pirates. The sniper before us is a member of Blackbeard's crew. Should we just kill Blackbeard here? Luffy threw the sniper's body aside and immediately enveloped the entire town with observation hockey. This small town on Gaia Island is called Mogu Town and is a gathering place for pirates who are extravagant spenders. The town itself is not very big, much smaller than Alabasta's capital. His observation hockey easily covered the entire town, but he didn't sense any particularly strong aura. He's not here. Luffy frowned slightly. Even before eating the dark fruit, Blackbeard was able to injure red-haired Shanks. After eating the dark fruit, his strength became even stronger. If someone like him were in this town, his observation hockey would definitely be able to detect it. By the way, what did this person say just now? Luffy restrained his observation hockey and once again looked at the body. My captain is very interested in you and wants to talk to you. I deliberately waited for you here. It seems that's what he said. Blackbeard left? Only leaving behind this sniper? Luffy surveyed his surroundings. The town that he had destroyed with a punch was now in ruins and the people who were caught up in the impact were sent flying. He went a little overboard and ended up causing trouble with this sniper. It was truly an accident that the town was destroyed. At this moment, the Sariyama pirates landed at the port. After coming down from the ship, everyone saw that more than half of Mogu town had turned into ruins, and each of them had a stunned expression. What happened with the explosion just now? In the center of the ruins, the ape saw Luffy, along with the dead bodies marked with 870, that Luffy had thrown at his feet. It's you. Did you. Do this. The ape asked, his heart filled with shock. His subordinates behind him stared at Luffy with fearful eyes. At this moment, they realized that something was wrong. Boss, it's, it's the Shichibukai from the news. Take down the straw hat Luffy who defeated Crocodile. I knew they looked familiar. The pirate flag they're flying is the Straw Hat Pirates. As the island pointed to by Alabasta's magnetic field, 
Guy Island naturally knew about the events happening nearby. Only those who didn't know about this world-shaking news were the odd ones out. So you're a Shichibukai? The ape swallowed nervously. You came at the right time, ape. I have something to ask you, Luffy said, temporarily putting aside the matter of Blackbeard. I want to use the knock upstream to reach Sky Island. There should be someone on this island who understands this current. Take me to meet them. You mean Captain Kuro? The ape said, showing a troubled expression, unable to hide his emotions. The person in front of him was a Shichibukai, the person who had destroyed half of Mock Town. How could he bring him to meet their captain? Ha ha ha, don't be so scared. I'm actually a good person, Luffy laughed and explained. It was this sniper who provoked me first and almost hurt my woman. It wouldn't be excessive for me to kill him, right? If he hadn't blocked that bullet just now, Vivi would have definitely been injured. She had only eaten two Rokushiki fruits, and her physical strength hadn't reached the level of a superhuman. Of course, the most crucial point was. Her father had entrusted his daughter to him with peace of mind. If she got injured just two days after leaving, he wouldn't know how to explain it to his future father-in-law. So it's like this. The ape said, with a look of realization. But you want to go to Sky Island? In this era, there are very few people who still believe in the existence of Sky Island. Upon hearing this, Luffy chuckled lightly. The meaning of life lies in experiencing things we have never seen before and experiencing the beauty we have never experienced. Brother Ape, Sky Island does exist. Don't say that he knows Sky Island really exists, even if he doesn't know, he still wants to go and confirm it with his own eyes. The same words spoken by different people have different persuasiveness. The monkey man's face was full of astonishment. If a Shichibukai says that Sky Island exists and wants to go, then the probability of its existence greatly increases. If the boss hears about it, he will definitely be very happy. I understand, I will take you to meet. The monkey man nodded blankly, and at this moment, footsteps sounded. Looking back, I saw a man and a woman walking towards us. The leader had golden short hair, wearing a pink t-shirt, white pants, and a pirate cloak draped over him. He walked with his hands in his pockets, constantly looking around. How did this town become like this? Did you do it? The man finally looked at Luffy. I am Bellamy, captain of the Bellamy Pirates, with a bounty of 55 million berries. You are the Shichibukai mentioned in the news, Monkey D. Luffy. I have seen your face in the news. Luffy knocked him out. Bellamy, one of the seven warlords of the sea, and at the same time, a fanatic worshipper, just like Bartolomeo, worships Doflamingo. In the original story, this guy beat up Luffy and Zoro, mocking that Sky Island doesn't exist. What's up? Luffy smiled. I heard what you said just now. Does Sky Island really exist? Can you reach Sky Island by going through the knock upstream? Is it important to you whether it exists or not? Luffy raised an eyebrow. I don't believe Sky Island exists. The era of pirates dreaming has long passed. Saying that, Bellamy knelt down with a thud, shocking his subordinates behind him. Bellamy? Even Luffy showed a surprised expression. What are you doing? I don't accept little brothers like you. This scene seems to have happened in Logue Town before. Bartolomeo suddenly ran up to him and begged to join. No. I don't want you to accept me as a little brother. I am currently under the flag of Doflamingo. Straw Hat Luffy, you are a pirate who defeated a Shichibukai and took their position. If even someone like you says that Sky Island exists, then Sky Island might really exist. Bellamy lowered his head and solemnly requested, if you're going to Sky Island next, can you allow me to follow behind? I want to witness it with my own eyes. Upon hearing his words, his companions were stunned. Is this Bellamy? Luffy was also surprised that his words could make someone believe. If this kid went to modern Earth, he would be easily fooled by those authoritative experts. After a moment of thought, he said, there are generally three ways to get to Sky Island. Three ways? Bellamy was shocked. Then Luffy began to explain. The first is to reach it directly through the knock-up stream. The second is to go through the West Blues Peak, a path made up of island clouds. The third is for someone with abilities to fly up there. With that, he turned and walked towards the port, and the last sentence reached Bellamy's ears. We're going to use the knock-up stream to go up next. 
We won't take you with us, and we won't wait for you. If you want to go, prepare yourself. It's impossible for someone to hitch a ride. If Bellamy wants to go, he should take a boat himself. However, after this incident, he had a slightly different view of this guy. Thank you very much. Bellamy shouted loudly and then stood up. Bellamy. Are you really going to do it? The person speaking, holding a woman in their arms, said with a puzzled expression on their face, You'll die. Every once in a while, a ship falls from the sky. Haven't you seen it? The knock upstream, this strange weather phenomenon, hasn't it already been scientifically explained? Sachs. Bellamy's gaze was incredibly calm. I used to think that way too, but Ashichabukai said that Sky Island really exists. Just like the Shichabukai da Flamingo whom he admired, the straw hat Luffy, also a Shichabukai, said that Sky Island exists. If he doesn't confirm it with his own eyes, what does his past knowledge count for? At this moment, he was just like the ridiculed Luffy and Zoro in the original story. Those two couldn't find a reason to fight, and he couldn't bear the fact that his past knowledge was wrong. But, you'll really die. Once you fall, there's no doubt you'll die. Sax opened his mouth, feeling parched. Why did you become a pirate if you fear death? Bellamy raised his right hand high, clenched it into a fist, and grinned. If you don't want to go, then stay at the resort and enjoy yourself for a few more days. If you want to go, come with me. At the same time, Grand Line, a certain sea area. A makeshift small boat made of four tree trunks bobbed up and down with the surging waves under the dim sky. No. It couldn't even be called a boat, just a small raft that could easily fall apart in a storm. On the raft, four people and a horse gathered together. The horse was sickly, lying on the raft, and the person lying on its back looked like they only had a breath left, as if they could die at any moment. Captain. The man speaking had bright red lipstick on, wore a black top hat, and was dressed like a theatrical character. Lafitte, the navigator of the Blackbeard Pirates. He held a white piece of paper in his hand, and at this moment, the paper was slowly burning. When the last corner turned to ashes and dissipated, Lafitte regretfully spoke up. Van Auger is dead. When the life card burns out, it means the owner is completely dead. Ha ha ha. Dead, huh? It seems like it was a mistake to let him stay in Mogu Town. Captain Teach, you should have let me stay. The man with well-developed arm muscles laughed heartily. This is truly unexpected. Captain Blackbeard ate Sakura peach pie in big bites and took a gulp of the cheapest rum. Bang. The bottle of alcohol was heavily smashed onto the wooden raft, shattering into pieces of glass on the spot. Ha ha ha. This is also the choice of fate. What a pity, Ioka. He laughed loudly. Dying silently in a place where the grand stage hasn't even opened yet. You must be unwilling too, right? Who killed him? The muscular man, wearing a champion belt around his waist, expressed confusion over his companion's death. Do you even need to ask? With his strength, the only person in these waters who can kill him and prevent him from escaping is that straw hat Luffy. Blackbeard grinned. Ha ha ha. That guy is just too overconfident. There's not a single pirate recognized by the government who is simple. If he doesn't understand this principle, there's nothing we can do even if he dies. Just letting him wait there for straw hat and conveying a few words, why did he end up dead? The weak patient on the sickbed weakly spoke, with a hint of inexplicable mockery at the corner of his mouth. Who knows? The others no longer paid attention. Lafitte pondered and said, the current problem is whether he actually conveyed the correct message or not. It can't be that he was inexplicably killed as soon as they met, right? Just saying a few words and conveying the intentions of their Blackbeard pirates should have been enough, right? The Blackbeard pirates were very interested in the newly appeared Shichibukai and even wanted to recruit them for cooperation. Hum. Suddenly, Lafitte squinted his eyes and saw a person on the sea ahead, amidst the storm, riding a bicycle. Captain, look ahead. That guy is. Blackbeard's expression froze, and he exclaimed, Aokiji, Marine Admiral. Why is he in a place like this? The expressions of everyone changed. Ha ha ha, riding a bicycle in this storm. What a monster. It seemed that they also noticed the few people riding a small raft in the storm. Aokiji raised his eyelids and greeted. Oh, what a coincidence. Hey, 
you guys, have you seen the ship of Straw Hat Luffy? The one with the Shichibukai. The Blackbeard Pirates replied, it's in the town of Moya Valley. Thanks. Aokiji continued to ride his bike in the pouring rain. After a few steps, he blinked and turned around, saying, are you guys pirates too? Flying the pirate flag, huh? What's your bounty? Zero. Is that so? Does the Marine Admiral have any interest in pirates with zero bounties? Bounty doesn't mean anything. I can't just. Aokiji exhaled cold air, and the turbulent sea around him slowly froze. The next moment, he was stunned. Lafitte jumped up and tore down the pirate flag. It was a misunderstanding just now, is that so? Ha ha ha. Yes. Although both sides said so, the pouring rain seemed to suddenly freeze at this moment, and the turbulent sea turned into a frozen landscape in an instant. Moya Valley. The Sunny and Mary were about to dock, but they set sail again. The two ships followed the Monkey D pirates, hugging the coast. On the other side of Moya Valley, on the other side of the island, is our base. Led by the Monkey D pirates, they quickly arrived at their destination. On the sparsely populated coast, there was a luxurious mansion. After everyone got ashore, they discovered that this house only had one wall. The luxurious villa was fake, and behind the wall was just a small house. Do the people who know about the knock upstream live here? Nami got off the ship and looked at the compass on her wrist. The compass was still pointing towards the sky. Luffy, we should try to reach Sky Island before the magnetic field is refreshed. Otherwise, even if we manage to go up, we might lose our way. The compass is currently being captured by the magnetic field of Sky Island. But if we stay on Jaya Island for too long, the magnetic field will be overridden and start pointing towards the next island. So, we need to hurry as much as possible, Robin nodded. In front of the small house, there was a wooden stake with a book placed on it. Robin walked over and picked up the book to flip through it. The Great Deceiver Roland? A fairy tale from North Blue. North Blue. Sanji caught onto the key information. I read this book when I was a kid. I didn't expect to find it here. Huh? Sanji, you're from North Blue? Usopp said in surprise. Didn't I mention it before? I was born in North Blue and grew up in East Blue. Huh? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. The group chatted at the door. Luffy followed the monkey person towards the small house. Captain. Captain. The monkey person shouted as he pushed open the door. There's a Shichibukai who wants to go to Sky Island. Inside the house, a man with a chestnut-shaped head was lying on a small bed, looking unwell. Upon hearing this, he forced himself to sit up and look towards the door in astonishment. You are. Luffy of the Straw Hat Pirates. Luffy stepped into the room and immediately noticed the man's discomfort. He shouted outside, Chopper, there's a patient here. After saying that, he turned to the man on the bed and spoke, I want to go to Sky Island. You must know about the knock up stream. Can you please tell me where and when it appears nearby? Jaya Island, a small house by the coast. After diagnosing the chestnut headed uncle lying on the bed, Chopper's face turned serious as he said, It's decompression sickness, and it's severe. How did it get this bad? Without more than 10 years of improper diving, it shouldn't have reached this level. Decompression sickness? What's that, Teacher Chopper? Kaya asked curiously. Sometimes divers can get this illness, which is not usually very serious, but this uncle's case is quite special, as it has become a chronic disease, Chopper explained quickly. Simply put, when divers ascend from the seabed to the surface, due to insufficient decompression, a certain element that is dissolved in the blood cannot remain in that state and forms bubbles under such circumstances. Afterwards, the bubbles expand inside and outside the blood vessels, causing damage to blood flow or muscle joints. This uncle must have been diving continuously while the bubbles had not yet disappeared, diving again and again every day, accumulating over time, which is why it has become like this, at least for the past 10 years. After listening to the professional doctor's explanation, the Straw Hat crew was very surprised. Cough. On the sickbed, the chestnut-headed man coughed and smiled, saying, impressive medical skills, just a simple examination and you can see everything. I have indeed been diving for ten years. Ha ha ha, of course, it took me a lot of effort to find a ship doctor like this, Luffy grinned. Ha ha ha. The man laughed and sat up, 
waving his hand to indicate that Chopper need not worry. My name is Karegai. Straw Hat Luffy, you said you're going to Sky Island? That's right. Really impressive, there are still people in this era who believe in the existence of Sky Island. You're quite a fool too. Karegai laughed heartily and said, Monkey, bring the alcohol. It's not good to not entertain guests properly when they come knocking. Yes, boss. The monkey immediately went to get the alcohol. Chopper hurriedly said, Wait a minute, it's best for you not to drink alcohol, and also, don't smoke. Look at the cigarette butts on your table, decompression sickness might not be what takes your life, lung cancer might. Thank you, Dr. Chopper. Cooley guy sat up and chuckled, saying, I know my body best. This won't kill me, so don't worry. Luffy fully agreed with this. Compared to people in the previous world, the physical strength of people in this world is at a monster level. So, can you tell me where the knock-up stream is now? Luffy asked, sitting down on a chair brought by Bartolomeo without hesitation. I will tell you everything I know, and then the Yuan Mountain Alliance will take you to the location of the knock-up stream, Cooley Guy nodded, without any concealment, and explained it very kindly. The knock-up stream occurs frequently in the sea near the town of Mofu, five times a month, very regularly. But the location is different each time. When was the most recent one? Nami asked, we need to get to Sky Island before the log pose resets, otherwise it will be troublesome. The magnetic force of this island only takes a day to fill up. You're a navigator, right? Don't worry, you have enough time. Cooley Guy paused and continued, when you arrived here, you must have encountered a sudden darkening of the sky, right? Yes, it was like a cumulonimbus cloud, but not quite the same. It was my first time seeing such a gloomy day, Nami replied. At this moment, the ape brought over some wine and poured a cup for Luffy. Cooley guy picked up a bottle, took a few sips, and then said, after encountering such a gloomy day, the knock-up stream will definitely occur the next day, so you have a chance, but only one. Hearing this, Nami breathed a sigh of relief, and everyone looked at Luffy, waiting for the captain's decision. Luffy smiled and said, Tomorrow? Where exactly? Probably around 10 o'clock in the morning, and as for the direction. According to my experience, it's in the south of this island, Cooley Guy replied. Upon hearing this, Usopp eagerly said, Then let's set off early, Luffy. Hold on. Cooley guy looked speechless, if you rush over like this, do you even know what the south direction is? Oh right, because our target is not an island but a sea current, the log pose won't work, Nami punched Usopp hard and said, shut up, Usopp. Haha, <laughs> there is a special bird called the guide bird, on this island. It is in the forest outside, and its head always points south. As long as you catch this bird, you will not lose your way. Upon hearing this, the loyal subordinate Bartholomew immediately stood up and said, Luffy Sama, leave it to me. Please rest assured, I will quickly catch this bird. Wait. Wait. Crocodile said helplessly. Straw Hat Luffy, why are your subordinates so impatient? Ha ha ha, indeed, Luffy laughed. In the original story, members like Usopp, who are timid, are extremely afraid. But now, on his ship, they are becoming more and more proactive. Shaking his head, Crocodile explained to Bartholomew, the call of the guide bird is very unique. Once you hear it, you will immediately understand. Understood. Bartholomew immediately called his subordinates, second team, assemble. Let's go. He quickly left with his five agents. There is a bug catching net at the entrance. Take it, it might be useful, Crocodile instructed. Oh, thank you. The group of people walked out of the cabin. At this moment, Robin asked curiously, why are you so kind to tell us all this? Is it simply because Luffy is a Shichibukai? No, actually I have my own selfish motives. My full name is Mr. Montblanc Crocodile. I am a descendant of the great swindler Montblanc Roland from 400 years ago. Crocodile lit a cigarette and explained while smoking. The straw hat crew listened attentively. Luffy, of course, knew this story and was not interested in hearing it again. He immediately patted Vivi's shoulder, indicating for her to come with him. At the same time, Luffy opened the adventure shop and started refreshing. The small crisis earlier made him slightly urgent. The further he goes in the Grand Line, the stronger enemies he will encounter. Leaving aside the others, Vivi and Nami, 
he must quickly ensure that these two girls have enough power so that they won't encounter such a situation again. Coincidentally, he also has a lot of adventure coins now. Anyway, let's start by refreshing four Rokushiki fruits. This time, he was very lucky. After only three refreshes, he saw a Rokushiki gift box. Adventure coins. 8245 right pointing arrow 7105 Unfortunately, he didn't see the hockey fruit. His observation hockey is still stuck at level 4. The two of them went outside. Vivi whispered, Mr. Luffy, is there something you want to tell me? This is for you. Luffy handed her the Rokushiki gift box. This is my 60 year. 60 years of lifespan. Vivi smiled brightly and happily accepted the gift box. After opening it, she indeed saw six Rokushiki fruits. She knew that Nami was the first to master all six Rokushiki techniques, while the other crew members only mastered one technique. Now, she also received this gift. Vivi was very moved. This showed that her position in Mr. Luffy's heart was the same as Miss Nami's. She didn't care about the Rokushiki techniques, but she cared about Mr. Luffy's intentions. Without saying any formal thank you, she hugged Luffy with gratitude and boldly gave him a kiss. In response, Luffy could only demonstrate and teach her what it means to exchange breaths. Meanwhile, outside the door, on the wall, an eye and an ear quietly turned into pink petals and disappeared. Inside the house, Robin smiled lightly, pretending not to see or hear anything. In the forest, Bartolomeo, full of enthusiasm, walked at the front. Mr. 1, Mr. 5, and Mr. 9 followed on the left and right. Mr. 2 and Mr. 3 were at the back. Why does this lady have to come and catch birds? One person is enough for this kind of thing, Bentham said with no enthusiasm, tiptoeing and doing ballet steps. Glancing at him, Mr. 3 snorted and said, What an idiot. What are you saying, Mr. 3? Mr. 2, I admit that your strength is indeed, a little bit, stronger than mine. But when it comes to intelligence, you are far inferior to me. Mr. Three pushed his glasses and revealed a wise look. It's been several days since you joined the Straw Hat Pirates, and you still haven't understood. In this pirate crew, what determines your position is not strength. Huh. What are you talking about? That long nosed Usopp, his fighting ability is not even as good as a chicken raised for two and a half years, but do you think there is a big difference in his position compared to the first mate, Rorino Azoro? Upon hearing this, Bentham couldn't help but reminisce. It seemed that there really wasn't much difference. These people quarreled and made noise every day, and it was impossible to tell who had a higher or lower position. If you had to say, the scariest one was the woman named Nami. So what are you trying to say? Haven't you understood yet? To integrate into this organization, what you need is not immense strength, but... At this point, Mr. Three pushed his glasses again and the lenses reflected a bright light of wisdom. What is it? It's pretending to be foolish. Mr. Three decisively said, as long as I pretend to be foolish and have fun with them every day, my position will eventually rise. I won't be limited to just being a member of the second team. Mr. Two. HMPH, it seems you don't understand, Mr. Two. I, Mr. Three, Galdino, I'm going to become the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. Galdino revealed his ambition. Unlike the dangerous missions he often had to carry out at Baroque Works, in the Straw Hat Pirates, as long as he pretends to be foolish and gets along with everyone, promotion and salary increase are not just dreams. You being a fool, this point, I have already fully understood. Huh. Galdino said dissatisfiedly, I haven't finished yet. To pretend to be foolish, one person is not enough. Haven't you noticed something more important? What? A partner. Understanding the importance of a partner. Look, Usopp and Chopper are a pair of partners, Zoro and Sanji are also a pair of partners, Johnny and Yosaku are also a pair of partners. Patting Bentham's shoulder, Galdino grinned and said, Join forces with me and climb up together, Mr. Two. Bentham was a little moved. Although he didn't know why this fool wanted to find him, they were all companions who went from unemployment to re employment. It was great to become partners. Mr. Three. Mr. Two. The two looked at each other, suddenly feeling a sense of sympathy. From the front came Bartolomeo's dissatisfied voice. Hey, hey, don't slack off, you two. 
Hurry up and catch that bird before tomorrow. A. Vice Captain Bardo. Ah. You can call me Vice Captain Bardo. I'm just a mere number three. This is a title exclusively for Luffy Sama. Just call me Vice Captain. Yes. Vice Captain Shao Ba. Evening. Bartolomeo and his team returned, not only capturing the guidebird, but also catching many strange things. Luffy Sama. This is the king of rhinoceros beetles. He ran over, as if inviting praise, and said, I caught a hundred of them. After a rigorous selection process, it stood out and became the king. Only such a king of rhinoceros beetles is worthy of your status as Luffy Sama, the 163rd. Who wants this thing? Luffy's mouth twitched, seeing Mr. Three next to him with a swollen face. What happened to him? He might have tripped. Looks like he got beaten up. Luffy waved his hand. Give it to Usopp, he'll definitely like it. After a pause, he called Chopper over to treat Mr. Three's injuries. At this moment, Kareha guy walked over, confirmed the guide bird, and nodded. Now, do we need the final preparations? What else? Nami blinked her eyes. Reinforce the ship. Your Sunny is sturdy, a very powerful ship, but the other Mary. To be honest, I don't know if it can withstand it. The power of the knock-up stream is immense, it can push the ship up to a height of 7,000 meters in an instant. Ordinary ships would disintegrate in the moment of impact. That is indeed a problem. Luffy nodded and immediately called the male crew members to start reinforcing the Mary's hull. Amidst everyone's busyness, two pirate crews arrived one after another. The first one is the Monkey Pirates, led by Captain Monkey D. Luffy. They, along with the eight pirates, are collectively known as the Monkey Mountain Alliance and are fans and subordinates of Curly Guy. With their joining, the work became smoother. Next to arrive is the Bellamy Pirates led by Bellamy. Of course, they are not here to steal gold, but to wait for departure and go to Sky Island together with the others. Luffy doesn't really care, he just follows along, regardless of the consequences. Seeing everyone reinforcing the Merry Go, Bellamy also had his subordinates help. It continued until the early hours of the next day, around 4 or 5 o'clock. When the female crew members, who had slept soundly, woke up, everyone finally finished reinforcing the Merry Go. At this point, the original Golden Merry Go has been completely transformed. It now has many iron plates and is equipped with a pair of wings. Especially the most critical part of a ship, the keel, has undergone extensive construction at the bottom of the ship, regardless of cost, to ensure that it does not disintegrate in the knock-up stream. That should do it. Curly Guy stood on the shore, looking at the early morning sunlight, and smiled, Straw Hat Luffy, I wish you a smooth journey. Thank you, Roland Dosun. Luffy stood on the deck of the Merry Go, grinning. Your ancestors were not liars. The sky island above our heads is real, as well as the Golden City. Just wait, you'll know soon enough. Curly Guy stood still in place, watching the ship gradually move away from the shore. The fleet, consisting of five pirate ships, sailed towards the area where the knock-up stream is located. They are respectively. The Sunny Go, commanded by Nami. The Merry Go, with Luffy at the helm. The Spring Hopper, led by Bellamy. The Victory Hunter, belonging to the Ape Pirates. The Utan Detection, belonging to the Monkey Pirates. Set sail, heading for Sky Island. The fleet sailed towards the south of Gaia Island and entered the target area after several hours of navigation. Wow! Look, Luffy, what is that? Usopp exclaimed loudly, holding a telescope. In the distance, there was an incredibly massive cumulonimbus cloud that almost covered half of the sky. In the center of the cloud layer, there was a pitch black thundercloud that concaved upwards, forming a terrifying and profound hole. That's probably it, Johnny said excitedly. Yeah, it must be it. Will the knock up stream be below that cloud? Joseph looked into the distance and took a sharp breath. When faced with something enormous, humans couldn't help but feel a sense of insignificance. Shouts came from the monkey pirate's ship. Mr. Luffy, the appearance of the cumulonimbus cloud is earlier than expected. We will expedite the exploration of the specific location of the sea current. Your three ships should head towards that direction first. Luffy made an okay gesture and immediately ordered everyone to turn the helm towards the center of the cumulonimbus cloud. On the other side, Nami on the sunny go immediately ordered two of the three female agents to steer the ship's bow. 
Why two females? Because Miss Golden Week was a little girl, and in a group of adult women, little girls would always receive some preferential treatment. The going Mary. Bellamy took a deep breath and shouted to his subordinates, follow them. Okay. There were many crew members who chose to follow. Even Satch, who had previously advised against Bellamy, followed suit. I must be crazy, Bellamy. We're all crazy. He nervously lit a cigarette and anxiously took a puff. If you don't want to go, there's still a choice. You can return on the ship of the Alliance of Ape Mountain. Bellamy stared at the vast cumulonimbus cloud, grinning. No matter what you say, I won't change my mind, Satch. You idiot. I'm the vice captain. If even I don't go, everyone will give up like me. Satch threw the cigarette he had only taken one puff of onto the deck and stomped on it fiercely. Now we can only believe in that Shichibukai's words. Ah, it's better to sleep with women in a hotel. Haha. Ha. Remember the initial feeling of choosing to set sail? Bellamy clenched his fist, suppressing the restlessness in his heart. From North Blue all the way here, the comfortable life in Mocktown made us forget about the sea. I've made up my mind, Sash. If Sky Island really exists, I will choose to embark on an adventure once again. Bellamy. Sakis paused for a moment, then sneered, assuming we can survive, you idiot. Three pirate ships formed a single file line and entered the range of Gideon. The sky immediately became extremely dark, and if one looked up, they could see the deep hole above their heads, as if it could suck away one's soul. Below the hole in the deep cloud layer, the seawater was swirling, getting faster and faster, gradually forming a massive whirlpool. All three ships were carried by the swirling current, slowly heading towards the center of the whirlpool. Is this the place? Nami shouted loudly. A reply came from the monkey pirate's reconnaissance ship. Yes, Miss Nami. It is estimated that in another 15 minutes, the knock upstream will erupt, and you will enter the interior of the whirlpool. The interior? Nami looked at the terrifying whirlpool and felt a chill. The sunny circled around the whirlpool, getting closer to the center with each revolution. And at the center of the whirlpool was a bottomless darkness. Will we be swallowed by the darkness if we fall down? There might be some terrifying monster waiting for us with its mouth wide open, Robin said calmly. Vivi and Nami were frightened. Ah, please stop, Miss Robin. Shut up, Robin. Miss Valentine controlled the helm, but now she was caught in the current and couldn't control it anymore. She could only watch helplessly as the ship slid towards the center of the whirlpool, sweat streaming down her forehead, and forced a dry laugh, saying, ha ha ha. Luckily, I have the weight weight fruit ability. If worse comes to worst, I can fly. Beside her, someone crossed their arms and said, are you an idiot? If something happens to them, do you think Captain Luffy will spare us? Valentine. Don't say anything, damn it. Why do you always like to scare people? Suddenly, the ship broke free from the whirlpool and, due to the steepness, fell directly towards the dark center. In an instant, except for Robin, all the women screamed, making a collective, ah, sound. Immediately after, the Mary Go also followed suit and fell. Compared to the women, the men were naturally calmer, except for Usopp and Chopper, the timid members. They were also screaming, even louder than Nami and the others. Ha ha ha. Luffy couldn't help but laugh and turned to look at Bellamy's ship. His ship was much larger than the Sunny, and it was also falling along with them. Boom. The three ships fell into the darkness one after another, amidst screams, finally hitting the bottom. Only then did everyone realize that while they were falling, the whirlpool had gradually subsided. At this moment, the sea surface was extremely calm, as if it were the eve of a storm. Luffy. Nami shouted. We probably have about five minutes, so be prepared. Got it. Huh? Luffy responded and suddenly frowned. He jumped down from the bow of the ship and looked towards the southwest. In his observation hockey perception, a powerful aura was approaching. What's wrong, Luffy? Zoro noticed his expression and asked in a deep voice. It's a marine admiral, Zoro. Luffy squinted his eyes slightly and walked to the edge of the ship to look. On the calm and unruffled sea surface, a tall man in a suit was riding a bicycle towards them. Marine Admiral. Everyone was shocked. Sanji calmly said, What are you panicking about? We are the pirate crew under the Shichibukai, colleagues of the Marines. 
in a different department, I suppose? We are all organizations under the world government, so you could say that, reluctantly. At this moment, Aokiji rode his bike with one hand and raised his right arm to wave at everyone. According to the route, you guys would indeed be in a place like this. Monkey D. Luffy, are you going to Sky Island? Are you planning to go there, Aokiji? What's the matter? Luffy could probably guess what this guy was here for. I can't allow that, I also have a mission. Aokiji scratched his head and immediately stopped the pedals. In the next moment, the sea rapidly froze under the wheels of the bicycle, instantly freezing the sea area within a radius of several kilometers. Three pirate ships were all fixed on the surface of the sea. What, what? Nami said in surprise, Luffy, what's happening? Nothing, nothing happened. While saying that, Luffy lightly jumped off the merry-go and walked towards Aokiji, slowly saying, you guys go up first, I'll come over later. The spring snail. Sacha said in shock, what's going on? The marine admiral actually appeared. You saw it too, Bellamy. Bellamy had the same astonished expression. From the scene, it seemed like the Shichibukai and the marine admiral were going to fight. Why? They should be on the same side, right? The merry-go. Zoro's face looked grim as he said in a deep voice, Usopp, Sanji, Johnny, Yosaku, Bartolomeo, secure the ship, the knock-up stream is coming. His observation Haki had already heard the sound from the bottom of the sea. As for here, leave it to Luffy, the sunny go. Robin covered her mouth, her pupils shrinking suddenly. They're here to capture her. Shut up, Robin. Nami's face turned serious as she clenched her fist and whispered, We have to believe in Luffy. If we can't even trust Luffy, then who can we trust? Robin couldn't say anything in response. Will these people protect her in front of the Admiral? Vivi held her hand and gently reassured her, Don't be afraid, Robin. Aren't we comrades? We have to believe in Mr. Luffy. On the icy surface, Luffy's hockey continued to rise, he raised his right hand, moved his fingers, and made a cracking sound. I don't care what your mission is, I have some free time, so let's have a little fight. Aokiji stood next to his bicycle, silently rubbing his head. Full of youthful energy. Truly worthy of Garp's grandson. Does he even know why I'm here? Monkey D. Luffy, I have also received many favors from your grandfather in the past. Now that you are a Shichibukai, do you seriously want to fight me? After a pause, he continued, I'm just here to take away a woman, her name is Nei. Boom. Suddenly, a tremendous force emerged from the sea. The frozen sea surface created by Aokiji was instantly shattered, and the sea rose, lifting a pirate ship. Immediately after, a loud rumbling sound echoed. The terrifying impact lifted the three ships into the sky. Ah ha ha. Aokiji looked up, casually laughing. If you want to go to Sky Island, there's a safer route. The death rate of the knock-up stream is 99%. Your companions might fall down. No, I have an excellent navigator. Luffy grinned. Are you here to take Robin away? Give up. With me here, you won't take anything away. So you knew. Aokiji wasn't surprised. Without her, how could I decipher the historical texts on the four road poneglyphs? This is an order from the government. The government means nothing. Aokiji couldn't help but laugh, rubbing his forehead and saying, I really can't do anything about you guys. Since that's the case, I'll have to use force to bring you back. In his words, he swung his palm towards Luffy. Endless cold air emanated from his palm, as if it wanted to freeze even the atmosphere. Ice time. The cold air rapidly spread, almost instantaneously freezing Luffy into a statue. However, in the next second, crack, crack, crack. Fine cracks appeared on the surface of the ice, and with a bang, the ice shattered into sparkling fragments. Shave. Luffy moved, instantly entering second gear and closing in on Aokiji. Close combat. Aokiji smirked, thinking, does this kid really think an admiral's close combat ability is weak? But, what kind of ability is this? Steam emanated from Luffy's body, and Aokiji couldn't comprehend what kind of devil fruit ability it was. Luffy kicked fiercely. Armament hockey enveloped him, hardening and causing internal damage. Conqueror's hockey enveloped him. Using observation hockey to lock onto the target, Luffy predicted Aokiji's next blocking move. 
In the blink of an eye, Conqueror's hockey was unleashed, and Luffy's kick had no intention of holding back. The corners of Aokiji's mouth suddenly froze. He lifted his right leg to block the attack, but before contact was made, the power of Conqueror's hockey was transmitted. Bang! With an incredibly heavy blow, amidst a loud explosion, Aokiji was directly kicked out of his elemental form. His body turned into an ice sculpture, as if a beam of white light flew across the surface of the ice. With a swoosh, he flew hundreds or even thousands of kilometers in an instant. How is this possible? Conqueror's entanglement. The terrifying impact was too much for Aokiji to maintain his stable form. In the midst of being kicked away, his body made of ice shattered into countless pieces. From a distance, this scene looked as if Luffy's kick had turned Aokiji into a sky full of shattered ice. Don't hide, just warm up a bit. Luffy walked step by step, and his conqueror's hockey continued to rise. The terrifying power of conquerors at the IV-5 level caused even the ice surface within a radius of kilometers to violently shake and tear apart. At the same time, outside the ice layer, the sea surface in the distance suddenly began to freeze. Pieces of shattered ice kept piling up, gradually forming the shape of Aokiji. He crouched down, a trace of blood overflowing from the corner of his mouth. At this age, you actually mastered the entanglement of conquerors. Aokiji had a confused expression, like a black question mark. Luffy knew that he had Conqueror's hockey, he had read it clearly in the report about the new Shichibukai. Luffy was a devil fruit user, he knew that, but he didn't know the specific abilities of the fruit. However, Conqueror's entanglement was a power that only a very small number of top-tier strong individuals could master. Admiral's body is really tough. After taking my dominating entanglement, you only bleed a little? Luffy raised an eyebrow in surprise. The power of that blow was much stronger than when he fought the sniper yesterday. The power that could wipe out the town of Mogaya from the map, when it hit Aokiji, only made him bleed a little. Upon hearing this, Aokiji wiped off the blood from the corner of his mouth, stood up, and smiled. Don't underestimate me, I am Admiral after all. His expression became much more serious, his gaze fixed on Luffy. But, it's truly jaw dropping. Do you think Garp knows about your mastery of hockey? Stop talking nonsense. With a step, Luffy's foot slammed onto the ice, causing it to crack. He seemed like a beam of light as he flew towards Aokiji. Between his tightly clenched right fist, strands of black and red lightning emerged. Conqueror's hockey is indeed formidable, but even at a high level of mastery in armament hockey, it can still be countered. Aokiji didn't dodge or evade, instead, he met Luffy's Conqueror's hockey infused attack with a punch of his own. Boom. Although their fists didn't directly collide, a terrifying shockwave erupted. From the center of their clash, shockwaves spread rapidly in a spherical shape. The speed of its expansion was even supersonic. In an instant, the sea surface collapsed, forming a hemisphere with a diameter of one kilometer. The thunderous sound reached even the altitude of 10,000 meters. In the sky above Skypiea, before the golden bell of the Golden Bell Island could ring, the clash between the top experts from the Blue Sea had already awakened the Thunder God within the temple. At an altitude of 10,000 meters, above the White White Sea. Inside the temple's womb. On the bed where the God resided. God Enel suddenly opened his eyes, boom. The rumbling sound that reached his ears made him furrow his brow. What is this? What is this? Anil frowned. As the god ruling over this sky island, he indeed possessed godlike power. His observation hockey, combined with his own devil fruit ability, allowed him to receive electromagnetic waves and listen to the sounds of all living beings on the entire island. This power was known as mantra. At this moment, the rumbling sound in his ears made him unhappy. Closing his eyes and listening, his kenbunshoku hockey covered the entire sky island, but he couldn't find anything unusual. Hum. Three ships are coming. In his perception, he discovered an excellent navigator. He could even hear what the people on the three ships were saying specifically. Enel opened his eyes, and in the next moment, a flash of lightning flickered, and he had disappeared from the bed. When he reappeared, he was at the entrance of the temple, and immediately a servant came to greet him. Lord Enel. Has the surveillance officer at the gate of heaven reported any anomalies? 
There is a report of a group of tourists entering. There is a woman named, Nami, bring her to me. Yes. At an altitude of 10,000 meters. White White Sea. The three ships broke through the clouds one after another and arrived above a vast expanse of white clouds. The scene that appeared before everyone's eyes was like a fairy tale. Islands made of white clouds, a sea of clouds, cloud bridges, and cloud houses, all floating in the sky. The Merigo. It's Sky Island. Chopper exclaimed with great joy. Usopp's eyes lit up. He took off his coat and plunged into the sea of clouds. Hey, Chopper. Come down too. There are clouds under the sea here. Usopp shouted excitedly. Fool. Chopper is a devil fruit user. Don't get too excited, Usopp. Sanji calmly spoke and then jumped into the sea as well. Yahoo! Zoro looked disdainful and said, Aren't you different? The spring snipe. Ha! Ha! Bellamy was drenched in cold sweat, panting heavily. The previous process was extremely dangerous, but they finally reached Sky Island. Bellamy looked at the distant scenery and was completely stunned. Behind him, Sarquis immediately shouted, Count the number of people. Did someone fall just now? Vice Captain Sarquis, Luffy, Carrot, many people fell. The voice that answered still carried fear. The sunny go. Is this Sky Island? Nami stared at the distant scenery, standing on the deck like a statue. So beautiful. Vivi was also stunned, her mouth wide open, unable to speak for a while. The other 137 people had similar reactions. Robin, however, was in a daze and couldn't appreciate the beauty. I'm a little worried about Luffy, is he okay? He's fine, Robin. We have to believe in him. Nami regained her composure and comforted her. Although they said that, they were also somewhat uneasy in their hearts. Vivi took a deep breath and smiled, anyway, let's drop anchor first. Mr. Luffy will definitely come up soon. Time rewinds slightly, below Sky Island. Boom. Luffy's punch clashed with Aokiji's, and after a few seconds of stalemate, they were both pushed back by each other's power. With a swoosh, Luffy flew backwards and crashed directly into the Red Hair Pirate's ship. Entering from the side of the ship, piercing through it, and then crashing into the Monkey Pirate's ship again. Inside the cabin, my strength was defeated. Luffy stood up as if nothing had happened, leapt out of the broken gap, and arrived on the deck. Mr. Luffy. The gorilla exclaimed in shock, I'm fine. Luffy waved his hand and looked into the distance at Aokiji, who had also been sent flying. Aokiji, who was flying backwards, left a long trail on the sea surface. Wherever he passed, the sea froze, forming a straight ice bath. Haki was defeated. Aokiji's mind was greatly shaken. Conqueror's Haki is indeed Conqueror's Haki, especially after mastering the ability to entangle its destructive power far surpasses armament hockey. If it weren't for his own brute strength being stronger, he would be at a disadvantage in a fistfight. Unbelievable. Isn't Mr. Garp's grandson only 17 years old now? Close your eyes and don't look at his face. I don't think I can win against that guy in a fight. Aokiji thought in shock. Are all people with the surname Monkey Monsters? If this kid goes to the New World, he might cause a huge commotion. I have a headache. Nico Robin boarded his ship, and I can't take her away on my own. While saying these discouraged words, Aokiji stood up, but there was a smile on his face. The straw hat pirate ship, the Thousand Sunny. Luffy also laughed and rushed towards Aokiji again. On the ice path, a figure flashed in front of Aokiji, and Luffy had already appeared not far away. Suddenly, both of them looked up. In the direction of the rising sea current, figures were falling from the sky, flailing their arms and legs in a panic, as if trying to grab onto something, but they couldn't catch anything. They were falling from thousands of meters high, and once they fell into the water, their bodies would be shattered like a watermelon. Aokiji raised his eyebrows and said, look, your comrades are falling down. They are not my comrades, just pirates who came along for the fun. Luffy ignored it and calmly said, Aokiji, with your current power, it's not enough to take my people away. Aokiji did not refute this, as it was indeed the case. To settle the score with you, it would probably take a lot of time and effort. Forget it, Aokiji said with a lazy and helpless expression. But you should be prepared. The darkness that woman carries is not something that can be easily resolved. 
Keep pretending. Luffy sneered in his heart, exposing his true intentions on the spot. Twenty years ago, Sengoku launched the Buster Call to destroy Ohara. At that time, you were one of the five vice admirals. Not only did you let Robin escape, but you also let another traitor, Vice Admiral, Saul, escape, Luffy revealed. Aokiji's expression was shocked. How do you know? Even Mr. Garp doesn't know about this. You traitor. I'm going to report your good deeds to Sengoku. Luckily, I have his Den Den Mushi number, Luffy said, seemingly smiling, and took out a Den Den Mushi on the spot. Wait. Aokiji had a headache expression. What are you trying to do? Of course, Luffy was just pretending. Even if he reported it, he couldn't do anything to Aokiji. Of course, he had to thank Aokiji. If Aokiji hadn't let Robin escape, where would he find someone who could decipher history? That old man, Kazuki Joyboy, he didn't like him at all. Give up. Since Robin has joined my crew, I won't let you take her away, even if she's not an archaeologist but just an ordinary crew member, Luffy said. Aokiji was speechless, threatening a marine admiral. You really are Garp's grandson. That woman has survived for twenty years by betraying others. Be careful, she might stab you, Luffy said. You don't need to worry about that. Even if I give up, the world government will send someone else to do this kind of thing. Then bring it on. By opposing the government, the title you worked so hard to obtain will be taken away. Aokiji couldn't help but frown. Did Nico Robin give this kid some kind of brainwashing potion? Should I go back and remind Mr. Garp? Just a mere title? Luffy laughed. It's no big deal, let's just change the plan to save Ace. No, even if we give up on Ace, he won't give up on Robin. So, do you understand? Luffy's smile disappeared, and he spoke seriously, if you insist, then I can only kill you here. Kill me? Aokiji was stunned for a moment. It was not a joking tone at all, he was really prepared to do it, and he had such confidence. After a brief exchange, he still had the confidence to say such words. Where does this confidence come from? Was he not using his full strength just now? You're a terrifying kid. I understand, I'm afraid of you, really. Aokiji picked up his coat from the ground and turned to leave, I will report to the government that I didn't catch you. Are you satisfied now that you've reached Sky Island? Watching him walk away, Luffy smiled. Thanks, I'll say hello to my grandpa for you. Aokiji raised his hand slightly and left without looking back. No need for the bicycle either. The Monkey Mountain Alliance, who were watching from a distance, were dumbfounded. Did Admiral Aokiji admit defeat? I don't know, but he left. Mr. Luffy, are you okay? Someone shouted with concern. The knock up stream is about to disappear, and there are no ships now. If you want to go up. Thank you, but don't worry. Luffy waved his hand at them, and in the next moment, he entered Gear 5th. Boom. He leapt up like a beam of light, and in the blink of an eye, he disappeared into the Skypea clouds. What? Aokiji's footsteps suddenly stopped, and his pupils contracted. In the perception of sight, sound, and color, in that instant just now, Luffy's aura surged several times. He suddenly turned around and looked at G.D. Yun with a serious expression. However, unfortunately, the person had already entered the clouds, and he couldn't see the posture of the sun god. This kid just held back? He muttered in disbelief. Immediately after, he covered his abdomen, and the corners of his mouth twitched. What a reckless little bastard, that kick just now caused internal injuries. I was also careless, let's take a long vacation when we go back. 7,000 meters above ground, an endless sea of white clouds. Luffy stood empty, his gaze searching around. This is the White Sea. Above GD Yun, not far from the field of vision, there is a waterfall descending from the sky. At the front of the waterfall is a building resembling a station. Heaven's Gate. The Gate of Heaven. It seems that Nami and the others have already gone up. Thinking in his heart, Luffy immediately stepped into the air and arrived in front of the gate of heaven in an instant. This place does resemble a station, except that the passing vehicles are not trains, but ships. Beside the platform on the left, an elderly, wrinkled old lady walked out. I am the monitor of the gate of heaven, Amazon. Are you here for sightseeing or for a fight? Did three ships pass by just now? Yes. 
if you're here for sightseeing, the entry fee is 1 billion ikes per person. Saying so, the old lady picked up her camera and aimed it at Luffy, pressing the shutter. Click. However, in the next second after taking the photo, Luffy's figure flashed and appeared next to the old lady. With his right hand, he snatched the camera and gave it a light squeeze. With a bang, the camera turned into scrap metal. Are you here to fight? The old lady couldn't detect any change in expression. Did those people from before pay? They did, they were tourists. Upon hearing this, Luffy grinned and said, The rulers of your kingdom of gods dare to call themselves gods. It doesn't make sense. I need to teach them a lesson. One god is enough for this world. As soon as he finished speaking, a white flame cloud appeared beneath his feet, transforming into a beam of silver light that instantly rushed into the country. Who are you? The old lady shouted, The sun god. Upon hearing this, the old lady's eyelids twitched. She made no attempt to stop him, nor did she have the power to do so. She took out a communication device. This is the Gate of Heaven surveillance officer. I am reporting to the temple that a man claiming to be the sun god has declared war on the gods. On the other side, passing through the Gate of Heaven, what came into Luffy's view was a winding path leading to the higher clouds. Ships would depart from here and, with the help of the Sky Island Special Express Shrimp, ascend to the White Sea above and truly enter the territory of Sky Island. But Luffy naturally didn't need all that trouble. At this moment, he shot straight up, covering a mere 3,000 meters in an instant. As the light in front gradually became brighter and more dazzling, Luffy burst out of the White Sea and truly arrived at Sky Island. You have arrived at the new island, Kingdom of Gods Skypea. Reward. 10,000 adventure coins. A familiar system prompt, but it made Luffy pause in surprise. 10,000. He even suspected that he was seeing things, immediately opening his wallet. Adventure coins. 17,105, really 10,000. Why is Sky Island worth 10,000? He wondered in astonishment. East Blue, including the remaining West, South, and North Seas, each island is worth 100. The islands in the Paradise Sea, each one is worth 1,000. Perhaps in the New World, each island is worth 30,000. But why is Sky Island worth 10,000? In the system's judgment, does Sky Island belong to the New World? No, does Sky Island belong to a special sea area? It's like going from East Blue to the Paradise Sea, the rewards increase tenfold, and from the Paradise Sea to the White White Sea, the rewards are tenfold again. In short, get rich, all kinds of strange devil fruits that I used to hesitate to buy, even various novel props and strengthening items, can now be bought openly. Let me see what I got today. Luffy eagerly opens the adventure shop. Under the sudden wealth, it would be a waste not to spend it. Ship spirit devil fruit. After feeding it to the ship, the ship will be possessed by a ship spirit and gain the ability of automatic navigation, priced at 1000 adventure coins. Buy. I've wanted to buy it for a long time, and I've seen it many times, but I just couldn't bring myself to buy it. Life Fruit. Boxed. A 5-in-1 gift box. After consumption, it grants 1 year of lifespan, priced at 1000 adventure coins. Small Change. Buy. Awakening Fruit. After use, there is a 100% chance of awakening one's own devil fruit power, priced at 1000 D electric adventure coins. I'll pass on this one for now. Heightening fruit, boxed, a 10 in 1 gift box. After consumption, height increases by 10 centimeters. Priced at 3000 adventure coins. Strength may be temporary, but height is for a lifetime. Bought it. Luffy quickly scans through today's 10 items, and suddenly, his eyes light up. In the last tier, he sees something new. Rain rain fruit. Logia devil fruit. After consumption, it grants the power to create rain, and unbelievably, it has no side effects. Priced at 8,000 adventure coins. Today's 40% discount, 4,800 adventure coins, so you can actually buy devil fruits? Luffy is very surprised. Maybe he has too much money, so the system keeps refreshing. That must be it. Elogia devil fruit, even at a discounted price, costs 4,800 adventure coins. Luffy fell into deep thought. This thing is completely useless to him. A person cannot eat two devil fruits. Blackbeard is a special case. 
how he managed to do it remains a mystery. But the power of a logia is unquestionable, not to mention a devil fruit without any side effects. It feels like a waste not to buy it, especially since it's on sale. The price of 4,800 is equivalent to 24 hockey fruits. If the UU fruit and 24 hockey fruits were placed in front of him at the same time, even an idiot would choose the latter. If I run out of money, I can earn more. I can personally go to several sky islands in this world. But if I don't buy it now, there's no guarantee it will be available next time. Buy, buy, buy. Adventure coins, 17,105 right pointing arrow 7305. In one go, Luffy spent nearly 10,000 and obtained four items. One ship spirit fruit, five life extension fruits, ten growth enhancement fruits, one UU fruit. Luffy took out ten growth enhancement fruits and ate them in one bite. In the next moment, his body underwent a change. His height went from 1.74 meters to 1.84 meters in a short period of time. It seems like more than just a change in height. Luffy clenched his fist and thought to himself, my strength has also increased a bit. It's like compressing several years of growth into a few seconds. His physique became stronger. It was as if he had spent two or three years out of thin air. While his body grew taller, it also came with an enhancement of his physical strength. The life extension fruit doesn't have this effect, it simply increases some vitality. In his contemplation, he took out a life extension fruit and ate it. 73 to 74, indeed, it only increases vitality. As for the remaining four life extension fruits, he temporarily left them alone. As long as he didn't actively take them out, the system would continue to help preserve them. But once taken out, they couldn't be put back. As for the last ship spirit fruit and UU fruit, a flash of white light and two fruits appeared in his hands at the same time. The UU fruit is round in shape, covered with spiral patterns, and is not much different from the common devil fruit. The ship spirit fruit, about the size of a palm, is pure white and round, looking very delicious. How do I make the ship eat this thing? Luffy was completely confused and couldn't figure out how to make a ship eat a small fruit. There is a technique in this world to make inanimate objects eat devil fruits, but he is not sure how to do it specifically. Thinking of this, Luffy looked into the distance. About a kilometer away, there was a beach, and the Sunny and two other ships were docked on the shore. Luffy saw Nami and the others and immediately flew over. Luffy. The Straw Hat crew, who were playing on the beach, noticed Luffy's arrival one after another and breathed a sigh of relief. Luffy. Nami's face showed joy as she ran up to meet him, hugging Luffy and pressing his head against her chest. You really worried me. Uh? Too tight. Are you trying to suffocate me? Ah, sorry. Nami smiled and let go of the hug, her face showing a strange expression. You've grown taller, haven't you? As she said that, she raised her hand and gestured, suddenly towering over him by half a head. The others also gathered around, their faces filled with astonishment. Men, just one day apart, and they should be seen in a new light. Luffy casually made up a sentence. Everyone. Hasn't it only been a short time since we separated? Robin said softly, Are you okay, Luffy? What could be wrong? Aokiji was just going through the motions, he didn't plan to take you back. Luffy shook his head, if he really wanted to capture us, you wouldn't have been able to escape at that time. Having the ability to freeze, he can instantly freeze the surging sea currents. Want to leave? That can only mean underestimating Admiral. In the original story, when the Straw Hat crew first encountered Aokiji, that guy completely froze the sea area between two islands. For ordinary people to walk from one island to another, it takes several days. In any case, you don't have to worry, as long as you're on my ship, no one can take you away. After calming Robin down a bit, Luffy turned his head and saw Bellamy and his group not far away. Oh, you guys actually came up, he greeted them. Luffy Senpei. Bellamy led a part of the crew to come over. There were about twenty people, about half as many as before. He stood up straight and bowed, saying, Thank you very much. The previous me was indeed narrow minded, not having seen the sky outside the well, ignorantly believing that Sky Island doesn't exist. Although we lost many comrades this time, we also gained something. Next, we are prepared to explore this Sky Island. 
The Bellamy Pirates will never forget your kindness, and whenever you need it, at any time, we will repay today's favor. Bellamy said it solemnly. He straightened up and handed over a piece of paper. What is this? Usopp took it from his hand. This is my contact number. Well then, let's part ways here. Bellamy grinned and left the beach with the heavily injured Bellamy pirates. This guy is quite unexpected, Sanji shook his head. Luffy, what should we do with this? Usopp asked. Put it away. Although he doesn't need any repayment, it was their own choice to follow along, but after all, it was a kind gesture from someone else. It wouldn't be good to just throw away the phone number. Suddenly, Luffy remembered something and asked. Do you all pay to enter? Yes, each person pays one billion X. At first, it was shocking, but later I realized it's equivalent to 100,000 berries, Vivi nodded. Luffy looked at Nami in disbelief. This girl is actually willing to spend money? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Nami blushed when she was seen. Without you around, we don't feel safe. To avoid unnecessary trouble, we decided to pay. Pausing for a moment, she said angrily, but it's really expensive, over two million berries. Luffy couldn't help but laugh. There's a lot of gold on this island. As he spoke, he walked towards the grass by the beach. There were three reclining chairs made of island clouds in the pavilion. He comfortably lay down on one of them. As soon as she heard the word, gold, Nami's eyes turned into symbols of berries. She quickly came to his side and spoke in a gentle tone that made him afraid. Luffy, what did you just say, when you were on Gaia Island, did you also hear the story told by Kur Gai? Luffy held his head with both hands and casually said, the story of the great swindler Nolan 400 years ago. 400 years ago, the navigator Mont Blanc Nolan from North Blue had found the golden city Shandora. After returning to his country, he told the king about this news, and the king was very happy. He personally led a fleet to the Grand Line. But there was no gold at all, and Noland was executed on charges of deception. However, he never denied the existence of the Golden City until his death. His last words were probably, Shandora does exist. What does that mean? Nami widened her eyes. Is Shandora in the sky? The key words are knock up stream. Gaia Island, Sky Island. Luffy smiled and didn't directly give an answer. Robin pondered for a moment. When I was down below before, I saw a map of Gaia Island. It was missing a large area and didn't look complete, so. That place called the Golden City was carried up to the sky by the knock up stream? Nami was struck by lightning and stood up abruptly, holding Robin's hand, and said excitedly. Robin, let's go together and find the treasure. Vivi, you should come too. Robin shook her head with a light laugh. Nami was as understanding as always. Seeing that she wasn't going, Nami turned her head to Vivi. Vivi, you owe me 1.2 billion berries, so you definitely have to come. Eh? Vivi couldn't refuse, even though she actually owed it to Mr. Luffy. All right, Nami, I'll accompany you in the search, she reluctantly agreed. And your second mate too, Nami quickly added. So this was their plan? Vivi looked helpless. Vice Captain Bartolomeo rushed over immediately. Nami, don't worry, even if we have to turn Sky Island upside down, our second mate will definitely help you find the treasure. Let's go. Nami was full of enthusiasm, pointing to a distant cloud path. There should be a city over there. Let's go ask for information first. Luffy, you come too. She wasn't at ease and wanted to bring their strongest fighter along. You go. Bardo, protect them well. Yes, Captain Luffy. Immediately, Nami led the entire second mate crew in the direction of Angel Island. Watching them go in search of the treasure, Usopp sighed. When it comes to money, Nami turns into a devil. Luffy, aren't you going to do anything about it? Don't worry, I'll educate her properly. Hum, in the evening. Luffy took out the ship's spirit fruit and said to the remaining crew members. Do you know about ship spirits? Ship spirits. Ah, I've heard of them. Sanji sat cross-legged and recalled, I heard that when the crew and the ship form a deep bond, a little spirit with a wooden hammer appears. But that's just a legend, right? Ship spirits and all that. It's true. Luffy raised the fruit in his hand and smiled, this fruit is called the ship spirit fruit. 
As long as you feed it to a ship, a ship spirit will appear. What? Usopp picked up the fruit from his hand and observed it with curiosity on his face. Chopper said dumbfoundedly, but how do we feed the ship? I don't know, that's why I'm asking you guys. Luffy thought to himself that he couldn't figure out how to eat it. At this moment, Zoro suggested, the ship spirit is similar to a god, right? Is this thing an offering? If we put it on, will the ship spirit come to eat it? Everyone was shocked and looked at him in disbelief. Zoro blushed. What are you guys trying to say? Genius. Usopp gasped. Zoro, I underestimated you before. Sanji stood up and patted his shoulder, sighing, I'm sorry. Chopper admired. Zoro, you're so smart. I'm going to kill you all. Zoro immediately transformed into a shark's mouth and drew his sword, ready to attack. Ha ha ha. You guys should go try it. Luffy couldn't help but laugh, thinking that this might actually work. Zoro, I'm sorry, I underestimated you too. Immediately, Usopp took Chopper and Sanji and ran to the Mary to experiment. Johnny and Yosaku quickly abandoned their own captain and followed to join in the fun. On the beach, only Zoro, Robin, and Luffy remained. Luffy, since you know about the Golden Country, do you know where it is specifically? Upon hearing this, Luffy unexpectedly glanced at the green-haired woman. Has she become smart after being with him for so long? I roughly know the general area. Why not tell Nami and let them go find it? Zoro lay down on the nearby chair and took out a bottle of alcohol to drink. If they know, there won't be any sense of exploration. Why would I take away their fun? Besides, the treasure is right there. Luffy shook his head and took out the Yomi Yomi no Mi, contemplating who to give it to. First, of course, he had to choose between Nami and Vivi. The others could wait for now. When it came to his women, he tried to treat them equally. Both of them held the same position in his heart. Unfortunately, there was only one devil fruit, and it was truly difficult to decide who to give it to. Nami had the talent of a navigator, and the Yomi Yomi no Mi might have a powerful effect for her. Vivi's country was a desert nation, always lacking rain. With the power of this fruit, it might be able to improve the situation in Alabasta. Although Nami had said before that she didn't want to eat a devil fruit, it was because she didn't want to become a dry duck. This fruit was special and had no side effects. He believed that Nami definitely wanted it, but Vivi also needed it. Maybe I should try refreshing again, in case another one appears? Thinking in his heart, Luffy glanced at his savings. There were still over 7,000, just enough to refresh and get a hockey fruit, raising his observation hockey to version 5. Thinking it through, he immediately opened the adventure shop. You spent 20 adventure coins, and the adventure shop has stocked a new batch of goods. With a sweep of his gaze, Luffy froze. He saw another type of merchandise he had never seen before. Blank fruit. Placed beside a recently deceased ability user, it absorbs the dispersed fruit ability of the other person and transforms into the corresponding devil fruit. Incredibly, the devil fruit born this way has no side effects. Price. 5,000 adventure coins no discount, it is the first item at the top. In an instant of seeing this thing, he immediately thought of someone. God Enel, Logia Thunder Fruit user. Might as well kill him and take away his fruit ability, then there will be two Logia fruits, which can perfectly solve his own troubles. They are all Logia, and there are no side effects. This bowl of water is so flat. The only problem is, it's really expensive. Yu fruit costs 4,800, and the blank fruit costs 5,000. The rewards for coming to Sky Island today have been eaten up by them. System, is this also part of your calculation? Sure enough, money comes and goes quickly. Adventure coins, 7,305 right pointing arrow 2,285. Luffy stood up and said to Zoro beside him, I have a plan. What? The plan to hunt down the god. Huh? Luffy grinned and gestured for Zoro to follow. The ruler of this sky island is a god. Let's go kill him. Robin, are you coming? Killing a god? Robin's face was full of reluctance. It's very dangerous. You guys do your best, Luffy. There seems to be a piece of historical text in the place where the god is. Robin's body trembled, her eyes widened. What a wicked man, she smiled slightly, closed the book in her hand, and elegantly stood up from the cloud chair. Let's go, 
Captain Luffy.